What is up my dudes? First off, before we even get started, I wanna know if you guys can hear me all right, all right? So I wanna see a bunch of thumbs ups or maybe a bunch of uh, just different yeses or Patrick, I can hear you. Uh, just like give me some comments so that way I know that the audio is working all right before I start talking my ass off and giving you guys a ton of value, all right? So I know there's a little bit of a delay in the comments, so I'm just gonna keep rambling until I see those comments coming in, but I do have uh, a few announcements, just like I normally do, um, for this live stream. So the first announcement is, I have a big surprise for every guy who stays on the live stream until the end, all right? So uh, so Josh says, I can hear you, and sadly I can't update you with the KC game, because they don't play today. You are, very, you are very correct, but I'm looking forward to the Kansas City game when they play the Rams, because that's coming up, I believe, on Monday. Anyways, so... Back to the announcements. Uh, big surprise for all the guys who stay on for the entire time. So don't be one of the guys who uh, looks at this call and then goes, I'll just watch it later. Because as you saw last week, the guys who were on till the end got a massive surprise and a few badass bonuses. And we're gonna keep up the same thing. For the guys who stay on the call while we're live, I'm gonna reward you guys for um, engaging with me, commenting, uh, asking me questions, and just being present with me. All right, so that's first. Second, I will be giving away one $500 course like I have been on the last two or three live streams. I don't know which one this is now, um, but every week I give away at least one $500 course for free, meaning in the, guy, in the past, guys who are on Raw Dating Advice invested $500, sometimes even more than that, just to get this one course that I'm giving away. So um, the person who will win that today, um, most likely gonna be one guy, will have the best question about sealing the deal and becoming a closer with women. Also, third announcement, if we can get 100 people on this live stream at the exact same time while we're live, and 100 likes on the video, meaning that little thumbs up icon, if we can get 100 likes and 100 people on at the same time, I have the most badass surprise that you guys have ever seen for me. All right, you, you guys have seen some uh, good rewards that I've given out, but this one I'm super excited to give out if we can hit that benchmark, and I don't wanna tell you what it is, because I know if I told you, it'd probably um, motivate you more to go out, find some friends, some find some guy who needs this advice and get him on the live stream. However, I don't wanna ruin the surprise, so I don't wanna give you any hints about what it is, but you guys are going to fucking love it. All right, so that said, this one is very different than most of the live streams we've talked about. Last week, we talked about texting, which is one of those things that a lot of guys, uh, it's on the forefront of a lot of guys' minds, right? A lot of guys know that they could become better at texting women. But this week, we're talking about how to become a closer with women. Now, what do I mean by becoming a hard closer with women? I'm talking about um, being the guy who, if you go out with a girl on a date, you'll know with a high likelihood that you'll be able to seal the deal, right? Get it in with the girl or, you know, make her your girlfriend. Whatever your goal is for this girl, whether you want to sleep with her, which I would recommend because uh, most good relationships actually start out with physical chemistry as well as the, you know, emotional chemistry as well. So um, whether you just want to rack up the numbers and sleep with this girl or you want to be able to get that one awesome girlfriend who's your ride or die chick or you know you want a roster of women. I don't care what it is that you're looking to do in your dating life. In fact, everybody kind of has different goals. Um, but these are the fundamental tools to becoming the guy who can consistently close and consistently seal the deal with those girls. So um, I'm pretty excited to get started. But that said, because this is somewhat of a new topic, I do have a warning, and I have it written down because I wanted to read it. Want to read it to you because um, this is legit, and I truly do stand by what I'm about to tell you right now. Um, mostly because I know that there are a lot of guys who watch raw dating advice, maybe even invest in raw dating advice courses, but they're not necessarily the types of guys who have the same values that I do. So uh, here's my warning to you. This live stream that we're about to go through today uh, is only for the guys who want the best for themselves, their dating lives, and the women they seduce, right? No matter what your goal is with that girl, um, you want the best for yourself and them. It's a win-win. And if you are not an action taker, you don't see the value in improving yourselves and studying from the best, or you despise women and only view them as objects, then you will not benefit from this information. However, if you love women, right, you genuinely like women and you respect them, 
and you love improving yourself every day, which you know a lot of the guys who are here every week, obviously this is you, um, and you are willing to take massive action to become the most confident, courageous, and charismatic version of yourself, then keep watching, dude, because all of this is gonna be very relevant to you, all right? So uh, I wanna also make sure that the lighting is all right. So let me know if the lighting is distracting, if it's too bright behind me, um, but either way, let's get started. I got five secrets for you today, and these are closer mentality secrets, right? The different mindset shifts, the way guys who close with women consistently think about the whole seduction process. And uh, I don't know if you saw my live stream last week where I kind of teased you about what this is gonna be about, but my inspiration for this live stream is actually this book right here. Um, Kobe Bryant is one of my, he was one of my role models growing up. And I told you guys last week, like I was a huge Chicago Bulls fan. My entire bedroom as a kid was decked out in Chicago Bulls gear, Chicago Bulls bedspread. I had Chicago Bulls um, jerseys, lamps, everything, right? And when Michael Jordan retired in 1998, I was so heartbroken and I needed to find someone else to model and to really just like use as like one of those guys who I really look up to and that was Kobe Bryant. That was the guy who I found, right? So Kobe Bryant, he's got this whole thing. It's the Mamba mentality. It's the killer mentality. It's what's uh, responsible for him being super successful. So when this book dropped like literally a month ago, I picked it up. It's amazing. It's full of pictures, right? If you don't like to read a lot of words, a lot of good pictures, but he talks about all the different things that made him the Black Mamba, right? The Kobe Bryant that we all know, look up to, and you know talk about today, right? What exactly... How did he think about the game before the game when he was preparing? How did he think about practice? How did he approach um, going into like competition where other guys were like had a target on Kobe's back, right? What was his mindsets the entire time? So this book is really the influence for what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm going to be giving you the closers mentality, not necessarily the Mamba mentality, but it's the Mamba mentality of game if you want to think about it like that. So. Let's get into it without any further ado. Have I have I titillated your guys' emotions yet? Have I get, have I piqued your interest yet? All right, cool. So, closer's secret number one is you must avoid the pussy repelling behaviors. All right, because here's the thing, man. Just like basketball, just like football, just like any game, especially the game of seducing women there are fundamental rules that you need to abide by and they call them fundamental because whether or not you're a flashy player, you know, in basketball or you're a super just like clean cut player and you go by the rule book, everybody follows the same fundamentals. In fact, if you deviate from the fundamentals, the less success you're gonna have. So these are the fundamentals and these are the things that no matter if you're just wanting to become super attractive to women or you wanna become a consistent closer with women, you must avoid these three, let's call them pussy repelling mistakes. The first one is the born with it mentality, right? If you wanna be a closer and you want the closer's mentality, you gotta avoid the born with it mentality. Kobe Bryant was not born with legendary basketball DNA. Yes, his father was in the NBA. Yes, he's a really athletic person, but how many other guys are super athletic that play in the NBA and aren't as legendary as Kobe Bryant, right? It's because their mentality is different. The way they approach the game is different. Same with seducing women, right? The guys who think, oh, that guy's just naturally good with women because he was born with it. He was born that way. He was born a good leader. He was born charismatic. He was born with people liking him. Fuck that shit. When you start thinking like that and you start telling yourself false lies like that to yourself, in reality, it all comes back to your self-talk. How are you talking to yourself? How are you telling yourself the world works? What is your frame of the world? And if that's your frame, that the guys who are naturally, the guys who are already good with women, the guys who consistently seal the deal, the guys who just have a lot of success in general with women, if you believe that they're born with it, you're subconsciously telling yourself that I was not born with it, therefore I cannot achieve that, right? And if you are not currently consistently closing the deal with the women that you're going on a date with, the women that you text, the women that you meet up with, the women who you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Whether you've met them before or not, if you're not where you're at, where you wanna be with your own dating life, then this is not gonna help you having the born with it mentality. Stop thinking that some guys are born with some magical trait with a silver spoon in their mouth because they're not. Yes, some people have uh, natural advantages and some people have natural disadvantages, but it's all about how you use the resources that you got, right? If you follow Tony Robbins at all, he talks about becoming resourceful, right? So um, I'll just give you an example. 
we have a customer service team for raw dating advice and um, sometimes I ask them to do different tasks that are outside of what their job description entails. However, I know that whether or not they know how to do that task, they are resourceful. They are the type of person who can look at the resources they got and figure it out along the way. And those are the type of people that I like to associate myself with because what do you think um, Kobe Bryant does? He's resourceful with what he got. I don't know if you know this, and I don't know if you're a huge basketball fan like me, but Kobe Bryant, when he was uh, you know, winning championships, like back in 2008, right? He, had, he did it with a broken finger the entire season. Literally, his finger, he even talks about it in this book, his finger was so bad that his coaches begged him not to play, his trainers begged him not to play, and it, it was like so sensitive to the touch where if you just touched it like that, it was like a crippling pain. However, Kobe knew his mission. Kobe knew what he was setting out to and he had this mentality. He was resourceful with what he had and he said, you know what? I can't play with 10 fingers that are in great health. So you know what? Tape this one as tight as you can to the next one and I'm gonna go out there and show up and do my thing regardless because I know what I want. I know what we're working towards and I know that I'm gonna find the resources necessary to do it. He literally had to change his shot around and all the muscle memory that he had built up throughout his first 30 years of life to change his shot just to appease his broken finger. Can you imagine that? So. I know I'm making a lot of basketball references, but I'll, I'll, I'll promise you, I'll bring this back to game, right? So literally imagine this. If you've ever shot a basketball, I used to play basketball all the time. If you ever shot a basketball, you can shoot the ball off of your front two fingers, your middle finger, or your index finger. There's three ways to shoot it, right? Kobe was primarily a middle finger shooter. So when he shoots a basketball, the last finger to, sh to touch the basketball is his middle finger. He flicks it like that, right? Um, I personally use my first two fingers. And you know, if you've ever played sports or you do anything with that involves muscle memory, that changing something as simple as being a middle finger shooter and a front two finger shooter, if you have to change it like that, that small difference can make, it, it can throw you off severely, right? Kobe Bryant, the ultimate closer in basketball and you becoming a resourceful seducer in game, right? He literally had to change from being a middle finger shooter to a two finger shooter because the middle finger was the one that was so broken that it, it was crippling pain every time anybody touched it. Imagine catching passes and shooting every single time with your middle finger. He had to change his entire shot. And if he can do that and still win championships and still go to the NBA, I promise you, you can find the resources to uh, become the most attractive version of yourself and work with what you got. So I don't care if you're 5'6 and you're looking at the guy who's 6'3 and goes, man, he was born with, what is that? Nine extra inches. He was born with nine inches more than me. Are you telling me that guys who are 5'6 can't get laid? Has a guy who's 5'6 ever gotten laid before? Because if the answer is yes, that guys who are in the past who are 5'6 have gotten laid by, before by beautiful women, which I promise you that they have, right? It's just, there's no denying that, then there's no reason that you can't yourself, right? So don't think that some guys are born with some magical ability, and even if they do have uh, some advantage that you perceive to be over you, you still got a lot to work with, right? The Joker 2002, you are a god. Thank you, my sir. Um, I wouldn't necessarily compare myself to God, but, you know, I like myself, <laughs> all right? Thank you, man. I really appreciate compliments like that, man. I'm really glad you guys are enjoying this, um, and I'm really glad that you guys are vibing with it, uh, vibing with a lot of the references and stories that I, got, I give you guys. But that's the first one, is avoid the born with it mentality, right? Second one, avoid the nice guy mentality. Now, if you ever bought uh, some programs for me in the past, you've heard me talk about the difference between a nice guy and a gentleman, right? And closers know the difference, right? So. The nice guy mentality. What does a nice guy do to women? All right, I wanna see your comments. What, is it, what does a standard nice guy do to get a girl to like him? Give me some examples. I wanna see it from you guys. <sighs> I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I know, you, I know you guys are frantically typing away at the keyboard. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. All right, remember, this is a conversation between all of us, not just me talking to you guys. A nice guy puts the woman on a pedestal, generally speaking, yes. A nice guy does exactly what she wants to please her. Buy flowers, let me do your homework, 
uh, prostrates herself at her feet and begs. Uh, outcome dependent, he becomes a yes man. Yes, all these things, right? This is typical nice guy behavior. So a nice guy will go out of his way, change his own behavior, change his own values just to appease the other girl, right? If you wanna think about it in terms of rapport, the nice guy does anything to avoid breaking rapport with a girl that he likes because he thinks that if he does anything to displease her, in fact, if he doesn't do anything to go over the top to please her, then you know he, he thinks he's not gonna get the girl. So a nice guy, the nice guy, he will think, I'm gonna do a romantic thing by sending this, this girl flowers to her office to show her that I like her, to show her that I'm a nice guy, I'm romantic. He's gonna hold doors open for her. He's gonna buy her a drink. He's gonna offer, hey, what are you drinking? Let me buy you the next round or whatever. He'll do those things all in hopes that she'll go, oh, this is a nice guy. Uh, and not one of those assholes who I hate and I verbally talk about how much I hate them even though I sleep with them all the time, right? <laughs> she, she will, he'll think, okay, I'm just gonna be nice and he, he believes that because he does that behavior, even if he doesn't want to, that deep down, that she will approve of him, therefore he gets what he wants, right? In, in essence, he's intentionally chasing women thinking that's how you win women, right? He, he thinks that chasing a girl and chasing her validation and approval is how you close, how you seal the deal, and it's absolutely not. This is a fundamental, right? Now, here's the thing. Here's the difference. A gentleman and a nice guy, in my definition, are different. I just gave you my definition of a nice guy. Now, here's my definition of a gentleman, which is AKA the closer, right? A closer, a gentleman, he can do all the nice guy things. He can compliment girls till the end of the day. He can buy her flowers, he can hold doors open for her, he can buy her drinks, he can do all of the same nice guy stuff. However, his motivation is different. Yes, Bo Jin, you are correct. The hungry never get fed, yo. The hungry never get fed, yo. Um, so here's the thing, here's the key difference. It's the motivation behind the action, right? Because everything, that you do, there's a motivation behind it. Whether it's like a small motivation, like I feel a little bit hungry, so I'm gonna go to the fridge and get a, a bite to eat, right? Every action you take has an underlying motivation behind it, right? So the nice guy's motivation is winning the girl's approval. The gentleman, he approves of himself. The closer, he approves of himself and he uses his emotional state in the moment to fuel his actions, right? So if he does a nice thing for a girl, a nice thing for a girl, it's because he did it for him. He didn't give to get validation, he gave to give because he, he's just overflowing with positive emotions, overflowing with good energy, good vibes, that it manifested itself in his actions um, where that became like nice guy things, right? But a woman, they have like a sixth sense for this shit. She can tell the difference between if you're buying her a drink because you're just the type of guy who spreads the joy and will buy anybody who he's wanting to have a good time with at, in that moment a drink, or if you're only buying her a drink because you want to sick your dick in between her legs, right? She knows the difference. It's a sixth sense that women have. And in reality, it's just that women biologically, um, they've been trained, hardwired in their brain to see little micro expressions on your face. They can see the honest signals. In, in seduction, in the dating community, we talk, it, we talk about honest signals. I don't technically um, use those terms a lot um, just because I try to refrain from using language that uh, guys who would consider themselves a pickup artist would use. And uh, this is, a, um, this is a, a tangent, but I'll bring it back, I promise. Um, the reason I do that is because this goes back to the way you talk to yourself. I know because I have a lot of experience working with guys who are self-proclaimed pickup artists. I also have a lot of experience working with other coaches who are just naturally cool guys who don't consider themselves pickup artists, right? And at the end of the day, even though yes, maybe I'll approach women when I go out, maybe I'll do a lot of things that a pickup artist might do, I don't identify as that and I don't use the same language because I know that most pickup artists don't get laid. Most pickup artists are not closers with women. And we'll talk about a lot of the differences here um, in the later secrets, but let's bring this back <laughs> off that tangent, back to what I was saying, right? The guy, um, women can tell the difference, right? And so, uh, uh, honest signals, right? Women. They can see the honest signal. It's like a little like a, a muscle twitch in your face or a micro expression on your face that conveys, oh, there's an underlying neediness behind this action, right? However, there's no twitch, there's no flinch, there's no micro expression that you have to be able to hide if you're genuinely doing this and giving value because you're the type of guy who gives value to give and he doesn't give it to get, he doesn't give to get, 
Does this make sense? I, I'm just talking, but I want to know um, with you guys' comments, like, yes, Patrick, this makes sense. It's Sunday. Give me some hallelujah. I, amen. Praise the praise the seduction gods, whatever. Um, let me know that this makes sense and it's really vibing with you guys. Because if, if it's not, I'll, I'll change. I'll make a different example to make sure that it hits home for you guys because this is this is a fundamental stuff. So I want to know um, that this is, this is hitting home for you guys. Um, the hungry never get fed. They say smile to act more positive and positivity will attract a girl, but others say that smiling too much will come off as feminine, which is a turn off to the girl. What do you think? Dude, I love this, man. This is exactly what we're talking about here. Here's the thing. If you saw me go out to a bar or a nightclub or to game women, um, you might see me doing things that you would go, oh, like that's not the, the attractive thing to do in that moment or that's not what I would imagine a guy who's a, the, one of the best seducers in the world to do, right? That's like, but here's the difference. My motivation behind my actions is completely different. My game personally, you know, obviously there's different styles of game, just like there's different styles of point guards in the NBA, right? My game is I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to say what I want and I'm going to be very unapologetic about it. And I won't feel bad whether or not I over compliment people, whether or not I do nice things or whether or not I'm kind of a dick sometimes because I know at the end of the day, my underlying motivation, my underlying core, um, where everything's coming from is from a place of positivity and win-win. I'm not doing things to offend people. I'm not doing things to put people off or speaking loudly in the room that I enter just because I want to everybody to hear me. I don't do that kind of shit just to get the reaction, right? And I'll talk about this. This actually leads me into the third pussy repelling behavior. Um, but my motivation is I'm just overflowing with positive emotions and I'm gonna be very unapologetic about it. And I'll tell you some stories in this live stream of stuff that's literally happened to me within the last week that really show that this is what works, right? It's all about eliminating these three things. So if you can literally like um, eliminate these three pussy repelling behaviors I'm giving you in secret number one, um, this will already level up your game, right? It just if, if that's all you do, this is your only takeaway, your game will already be better, all right? so. Um, I saw some comments come in. Praise Lord Patrick for this godly advice that never fails. Thank you. Uh, it's so true. It could be the next Bible. Dude, I don't know if you know this, but I, I do have a Bible about attraction and it's called 107 Proven Ways to Get the Girl. Hallelujah on a Sunday. All right. Uh, my ex wants to get back together and I said, no, is that the right move? Um, dude, what do you truly want? Deep down, ask yourself what you want. I can't answer that for you. Um, came at the middle, gonna watch afterwards. No, Frederico, I told you. I told you guys at the beginning, if you're on live, you're gonna get a, good, uh, a surprise by staying here through the end of the live stream. Don't be the type of guy who goes, I'll just watch this later because all the guys who are live, and if you were here last week, you know um, you will get some massive surprises. And this is gonna be uh, – I can promise you the surprise this week, if we hit our benchmarks that we're going for live – you're, you're going to be happy. And I, like I said, I don't want to give you any hints because I don't want to ruin the surprise, but you're going to love this. All right. So this brings me into pussy repelling behavior number three, and that is reaction seeking. Now, here's the thing, man. Remember, don't give to get, give to give, right? You can do nice things for girls as long as the motivation is not giving to get validation in return. You give because you're overflowing with good, positive emotions, good vibes, good times, you know what I'm saying? So don't be reaction seeking. Even if you have the first two down, if you, uh, let's say, drop a playfully challenging line in conversation, maybe you say something that's like a qualifying statement, you try to get this girl qualifying to you, or you you challenge her in any way, you tease her in any way, if you, and this is back, goes back to like the subtle, honest signals, the micro expressions in your eyes, the little eye movements that women are hardwired to read, right? Because your eye movements, your, your, um, you know, your, your micro expressions on your face, those aren't necessarily things that you're consciously controlling at all times, but you know, it, it's really hard to micromanage all that stuff. And even if you are like keeping your poker face, for lack of a better term, you're keeping your poker face, um, one or two of these little micro expressions, if you're not at the core, if you're at the core you don't actually eliminate these three behaviors, they will come through at some point in time, right? Um, I think Mystery, the original pickup artist, the original guy who came up with a lot of this attraction stuff um, back in like the early 2000s, he said in his book, The Mystery Method, which is a great read, by the way. You guys should definitely go check out, uh, check out The Mystery Method. Um, but in The Mystery Method, he said, on average, it will take you seven hours of face-to-face -face time 
to seduce a girl, like from meat to sticking your dick between her legs, right? Um, seven hours on average for him. I found that it really depends on um, where you're meeting these girls, the context that you're meeting them under, right? You can very easily go out to a bar or nightclub and within two hours have a girl back at your place. Like that's fine. But on average, um, for the standard woman that you'll meet throughout your day, throughout your life, it'll take about seven hours of face-to-face -face time. Don't you think that in those seven hours, it's gonna be very hard to micromanage all of your um, honest signals, your facial expressions, your micro expressions, and make sure that you never let one slip out if you're at the core doing things just to get her approval or you're at the core um, really wanting this to work out, you're outcome dependent. It's gonna be very hard for you to keep your poker face through the whole seven hours on average, right? At one point in time, you will mess up because you are not perfect. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect, right? So let's just eliminate that little mistake, that little sticking point by working on ourselves first and eliminating born with a mentality, the nice guy mentality and reaction seeking. So I give this example all the time, but how does a good comedian tell a joke, right? I've told this in so many of my videos and it really does hit home if you guys really think about it. Um, so I'm gonna tell it to you again, but a really good comedian versus a really bad comedian, right? A really bad comedian, he might be on stage at the Apollo in front of a thousand people um, and if he tells a joke, if it's a joke that he's not sure that will get a good uh, reaction from the audience, he might look at the, the people in the front row like, did you guys hear my joke? Did you guys like it? He'll drop the punchline and seek the reaction. However, the good comedian, he does things with a positive assumption, meaning that when he tells the joke, when he drops the punchline, he doesn't look at the people in the audience go, did you, did you like my joke? Did you, did you like it? He doesn't seek the reaction. He tells the joke, drops the punchline, looks off into the distance and already is waiting for the audience to stop laughing before they even start laughing. Talk about confidence right there. So if you can apply that to your own game, when you drop a playfully challenging line, a tease, you're unapologetic about it. Your motivation is not to hurt anybody's feelings, but you're doing it from a place of overflowing, good, positive, charismatic emotions, right? That right there is one of the keys, the fundamentals of becoming a consistent closer with women. All right, so go back to your comments. Uh, Blinkinator, if you do not, if you tr do truly want her back, you should give her that I would if dot dot dot, you know, so she feels like she needs your validation. I, I really like that. And I feel like you got that from the Attraction Bible. We've been referencing 107 Proven Ways to Get the Girl. Uh, just always plug in my book, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> um, Patrick, can you explain more about validation from Jared? Yeah, man, I, I would be happy to. So basically validation is like anything that you can do to show her that you approve of her, right? So if you, I was talking about this on my last str live stream, but you can validate a girl, you can compliment a girl, you can do things to make her feel good about herself, to show her that you approve of her. That's fine. However, it's dangerous if you're doing it for no reason or you're doing it from a place of, I'm only giving you this validation so that way you'll give me validation in return, right? That's when it becomes dangerous. So what I recommend is if you're gonna be the guy who gives that validation, which you should be, um, you do it after she does something that you want her to do, whether that's qualify to you or um, say yes to you or do a favor for you. Anytime she does something that you want to reward so that way she'll do it again in the future, that's when you give her a little hit of validation because validation, AKA like a compliment or uh, a behavior that shows her that you like her, um, what that will do is it really just gives her a dopamine hit. And just like a Facebook notification, if you're on Facebook, you're scrolling through and you see the little pop-up, say you got a notification, it's like a little dopamine hit. It's very small, but you kind of feel good on the inside because the mystery, someone's interacting with you online, oh my God, it's a validation, right? So in your interactions with women, you don't wanna be over-validating her, you wanna be validating her as rewards for her investment into you, if that makes sense. All right, take a quick drink here. Um. Jared, let me know if that made any sense to you. All right, so let's get into secret number two of becoming a closer with women, right? So the first one was avoiding those three pussy repelling behaviors. Now, closer secret number two is the fundamental key to a closer's mentality with women, and we've already kind of alluded to this, and that is making all of your interactions with women a win-win, right? So what do I mean by this? I, I mean, 
Understanding human nature, understanding what people gravitate towards and what people re are repelled by, right? And then using those, that understanding of human nature in your own conversations and interactions with women moving forward, right? Because at the end of the day, um, not only should you not be doing things to get validation from women, doing things just to get something in return, you should be doing things to um, basically make this an awesome interaction where both of you are just leveling up the entire time and it's a win-win for both of you. Meaning that at the end of the day, when she goes home, she can feel good about herself because she'll go, there was no neediness in the interaction. There was no, there was no agenda in this interaction. It was fun from the start. And if we had sex, that was like the cherry on top. It was a win-win the entire time. And like I said, to do this, it really comes down to just understanding what are the key motivations that women have, right, in dating, in seduction, right? And I don't mean like she wants to settle down with one guy right now, she wants to sleep around. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what do people, human nature, gravitate towards or move away from? And here's the thing, very simple, and if you've never heard this before, it's gonna blow your mind how simple it is, but likely if you're into personal development, if you followed my advice for a while, you've probably heard me say something along these lines, but people, especially women, will always go towards pleasure and away from pain. Let me say that again. They go towards things that bring them pleasure, towards things that make them feel good about themselves, right? Give them good emotions. They go away from things that bring them pain, fill them with negative emotions, um, fill them with anything that isn't a happy emotion, right? And, and happy is like an over-encompassing term for a lot of different emotions. Like if you imagine a, a circle and on the circle it had like thousands of different emotions popping out on it, like, and this is like a little infographic or something like that, and on the, you drew a line through the circle, on the top half, those emotions are generally positive emotions, and on the bottom half, those emotions are generally negative emotions, right? Um, and the only reason I'm making this distinction and uh, you know telling you to picture this graph is because I'm a visual person, and when I imagine this in my head, this is what I'm imagining. Um, so. Imagine all the different emotions, 360 degrees of emotions, half of them are generally positive, half of them are generally negative, right? Yes, in your, um, let's say, lifetime of interacting with this girl, your relationship with this girl, um, you have to give her the full range of emotions, right? Because um, the you can't really appreciate the, the super happy positive emotions unless you've experienced the negative ones too, right? So yes, you need to give her the full range. However, you need to understand generally in your seduction, what's, what is she gonna gravitate towards and what is she gonna say no to, right? When you try to lead this forward. So here's the thing, I've made this super simple on you. I'm gonna tell you exactly what they're gonna gravitate towards and what they're gonna move away from when you're on a date with this girl, when you're um, trying to lead this girl back to your place and here's what it is. What women want to avoid when sleeping with a guy, right? And this, this goes for you whether this is like a girl that you wanna make your girlfriend or a girl you wanna to add to your roster or a one night stand or you know whatever your motivation is for dating here, right? She will always want to avoid judgment from you all right, so be sexual in your interactions with her, but don't be pushy, right? So a girl will never sleep with a guy, and this goes back to being a closer with women, a guy who consistently seals the deal, right? A girl does not want to do anything with a guy, even if she finds him attractive, even if deep down her vagina gets wet when she's interacting with you, right? She will not want to sleep with you if she feels like at the end of the day, you're going to judge her negatively for sleeping with you, right? Whether you think she's easy, whether you think she's a slut, whether you're going out, you don't have a lot of experience with women, and you go out to the club, you you take action on some advice that you learn from raw dating advice. However, deep down, you still feel like club girls or girls who go home with a guy for a one night stand are sluts, and maybe that's like your just social conditioning at play, and that's a deep down belief you still have. Even if you do sleep with that girl, even if you do all the right things that I tell you to do, right? She will not want to sleep with you at the end of the day because she can tell deep down, she has a sixth sense for this, that you're the type of guy who will judge her afterwards negatively for sleeping with you, right? So, so don't make things harder on yourself. So what do I mean? How do you convey that you're not the type of guy who will judge her? Well, you got to show her, like we talked about last week and the weeks before and a lot of my videos and in chapter 18 of 107 Proven Ways to Get the Girl, um, uh, you got to show her that sex is a, a comfortable subject for you, meaning that you can easily talk about sex and just like you can easily talk about sex like it's no big deal, you can change the topic away from sex like it's no big deal, right? You can talk about sex as if it's 
as if it's a fucking book, right? Oh yeah, I really like sex. That was a really good, really good book, right? But you know, you know what else I like? I like pizza, right? You can change a topic just as well as you can change, make the topic sex, right? That's one of the best ways to show a girl that you're not gonna judge her for being sexual around you because that type of behavior in conversation is gonna show her that you're the type of guy who's comfortable with sex. And if you're comfortable with sex, she knows you're not gonna judge her negatively for showing that she's also comfortable with sex, right? Because uh, um, I hate to spoil your parade, rain on your parade, but if you're kind of new to this type of advice, um, much like I used to be back you know, six, seven years ago when I was getting into this stuff, I truly believed that women didn't weren't as sexual as guys. I didn't think that women masturbated that often. I didn't think that um, women liked to go home with guys on the first night of meeting them. And a lot of those behaviors were subconsciously holding me self, holding me back. They were preventing me from su- succeeding with the women that I was interacting with, com- conversing with, flirting with, going on dates with, because that core belief was dictating how I was leading this interaction. Is this making sense to you? Is it making sense? I wanna know, give me some thumbs up. I wanna see those likes come in. Remember, we gotta get to 100 likes for you guys to get that awesome surprise. And, um, you know, I just want some interaction with you guys, you know? This is a conversation, a little hangout for our Sunday fun day today. By the way, thank you guys so much for being here. I know you guys can be doing a lot of other things on a Sunday, on your weekends, and I'm really honored that you guys chose to be here with me. But, all right, I'm seeing the comments coming in, yes. Thumbs up. I'm really glad this is hitting home for you guys. So that's the first one. Women don't want to be judged. They will avoid judgment from you. Secondly, they want to avoid judgment from her friends. Now, here's the thing. At the end of the day, judgment that women are trying to avoid, they want to avoid being slut shamed. And here's the thing. Back in the day when we were, we're still tribal creatures, right? Let's, let's not get this twisted. We're, we still operate in tribes of people. Um, but back in the day when we were hunter gatherers of tribes of people, um, if you were kicked out of the tribe, if you were ousted from the tribe for whatever reason, then that meant imminent death, right? It would be hard for you to survive by yourself out in the nature where bears are going to eat you because they're just as hungry as you are, right? So, a woman, if she was seen as like a slut, if she was seen as like uh, a girl who sleeps around and causes drama, then she would be kicked out of the tribe, which would mean she would die, which would mean that her offspring don't get to live on to the next generation if she hasn't had off- offspring yet because she hasn't yet reproduced, right? This is all biology, right? So she wants to avoid judgment from you because she doesn't want you, the attractive male, the alpha male potentially, to kick her out of the tribe for being a slut. Also, she wants to avoid judgment from her friends because she doesn't want to be the one girl in the group who's seen as a slut, right? So here's the thing. If you're, let's say, bringing this back to an example of cold approaching a girl at a bar, right? Because it's, here's the thing, man. A little, another tangent. I like to go on tangents a lot. If you are, I don't care how you meet women. If you're, if you're all about the social circle game, if you're all about approaching women during the day or at a bar or nightclub, it doesn't fucking matter. But I believe that, Um, you truly see raw human nature and what people react to in the moment as fast as possible. You get a lot of reference experience by going out to hectic environments like bars and nightclubs and approaching women you've never met before because you will quickly learn what women like and don't like and what they'll tolerate and not tolerate and what they gravitate towards and what they don't gravitate towards, right? So going back to this example, let's say you approach a girl at a bar or a club or a girl who's just with her friends in public, right? She's not gonna leave the club or the bar with you and ditch her friends if you know her friends know that she's ditching them right so if you're talking to a girl at a bar it's crowded right and if she can see her friends and her friends are like making eye contact with her while she's in conversation with you even if it's a good conversation she will likely leave the conversation why because her friends are on the top of her mind she's looking at her friends she's making eye contact with them while talking to you and her friends don't know necessarily that she likes you they can't hear your conversation and they don't know you so when she can see her friends, whether or not she's feeling this conversation, she's feeling your vibe, even if she likes it, she will leave you because what's the alternative? The alternative is to keep talking to you and uh, risk being judged negatively as a slut by her friends as the easy girl who's gonna ditch her friends that she's known for a while for the guy who she just met or she's gonna save face, ditch the guy who, even if she likes him, she just met him and there's not a whole lot of consequences for, you know, 
breaking rapport with this dude and leaving this dude, right? So she'll save face by going back to her friends. And that's just one example of how this manifests itself. But if you haven't been closing with women, right? Ask yourself, are there any moments in time where she could take what we're doing now, um, going back to my place or hers as like, I'm gonna potentially judge her negatively because we haven't had that much sexual talk on this on this date or in this conversation. We haven't talked about sex. We haven't talked about any risque topics at all. Um, or maybe her friends are here and she doesn't wanna ditch her friends because like I said, she's known them for a while. She's gonna know them after tonight. Me, she may or may not know after tonight and she just met me, right? So ask yourself, have these elements been in play in times where you thought things were going good but they didn't really work out how you wanted them to, right? That's the second one. And the third one is, it kind of goes in the same thing. No girl wants to feel easy, right? It's gonna be, yes, a girl will go home with you. It'll happen to where you'll meet a girl and then five minutes later, you'll walk out the bar with her, right? In fact, that's how I met my girlfriend. Um, but, and I'll come back to this story in a little bit, but uh, most of the time, like, in the mystery method, he said on average, it'll take seven hours for a girl to, to wanna sleep with you or to actually end up sleeping with you. Seven hours of face-to-face -face time on average, right? Um, and this, like I said, it kinda depends, but uh, you know, no girl, it's gonna be very hard for her to go home with you, to for you to seal the deal with her without getting her very invested into you, right? So we'll talk about this in the next secret, um, but there has to be investment there. She has to get to know you. The whole seduction process, the overview of it is attraction, connection, isolation, escalation, right? And if you've seen any of my products where I talk about the seductive process, that's like four of the five steps, right? That, you have to go through all the steps. It's gonna be very rare that you're gonna just get a girl who's only attracted to you and she feels zero connection with you and she feels zero trust for you as a person. Um, if that's not there, it's gonna be very hard for her to wanna to go home with you because at the end of the day, um, her going home with a guy who she's just somewhat attracted to will be her communicating to herself, oh, I must just be an easy woman, right? And if she's an easy woman, she could potentially get negative judgment from you or her friends, all right? So it all kind of goes into not wanting to be slut-shamed, right? And understanding how to make your interactions a win-win at the end of the day, which we all kind already kind of talked about. All right, so we do have three secrets here, right? But I do want to give you a bonus, and then I'm going to take some questions before I get into the third, fourth, and fifth secret, right? So the bonus is I want you to... I don't want you to like overthink a lot of this stuff, right? I'm giving you a lot of like generalities here and like human nature and uh, mentalities to becoming a closer, but I don't want you to think about, um, oh, what does it mean when she said this? Is that a shit test? How I passed this shit test or else, um, and like that's like at the forefront of your mind, right? Think about the, the war, not the battle, right? Be willing to sacrifice one or two battles because you know in the long run when you meet her face to face, um, things will be go in your favor because you're a generally attractive guy. You follow a lot of the advice that we give here, right? So here's an example. Um, I used to have a client, um, I'm still cordial with this guy, I still talk to him, right? But his girlfriend now, who he met while I was coaching with him, um, he was really worried when he started dating her because he's really trying to micromanage every test that she was or wasn't giving him. And he'd hit me up at all times of the night like, Dude, what did it mean when she said this? Is this a shit test? She just invited me out to lunch. I don't know if this is her trying to take the lead, testing me to see if I'm gonna follow her lead or not. And I'm like, dude, she texted you and wanted to hang out, right? Whether or not that was a test. I don't think it's a test, but what, let's pretend it is. If it is a test, um, don't be too like, uh, for lack of a better term, don't be a frame freak about it. Like don't be the guy who kind of tries to win every single test that she might may or may not be giving you because you know that whether or not she asks you out to lunch, if you say yes to this, even though she's technically leading right there, you know when you see her in person, you're gonna win the overall war because you're gonna be attractive, you're gonna be non-reactive, you're gonna be teasing, you're gonna be challenging, you're gonna be charismatic, you're gonna be nonchalant, you're gonna do a lot of the attractive behaviors that we talk about in raw dating advice, right? So when, think war, not battle, right? Don't micromanage every single second of every single interaction. Just know that in general, if you follow a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about, you will win at the end of the day. You will close at the end of the day. You will seal the deal when it comes to that time. So let's take a few questions and uh, give my voice a break while you guys type in some questions for me. All right. Hey, someday will you do a video on high school girls, like the difference between them and older women and how to talk to high school girls. 
Um, the Joker, 2002, I'm sorry, but I will probably never make a video about how to game high school girls. One, because I'm 28 years old and that would be fucking creepy. Two, because I didn't have good game in high school, right? I was I was kind of like the, the ultimate like, I the reason why raw dating advice is so successful is because um, not only am I good at teaching a lot of this stuff, but also I'm, I've been in your shoes before, right? I haven't always been the go-to guy when it comes to attracting women or talking about this type of topic, right? It wasn't until my early 20s that I got really good at game when I started investing in products, um, taking action on a lot of this stuff, right? So for me to give advice on how to game high school chicks, not only would it feel a little weird and creepy to me and just like icky and I don't even want to touch that subject, but two, uh, I feel like it wouldn't be something that I'm qualified to give advice on, right? I think a lot of it does apply because it's human nature, but also high school girls are like more shy, more reserved. They're not as experienced as women in their 20s or 30s, right? So those go into a lot of the differences that will happen in high school. But at the end of the day, um, I think what ha in high school, women will naturally gravitate towards the guy who displays a lot of the, the attractive traits that we talk about here, right? So, um, that's how I'm gonna answer your question. Owen Brooks, how do you stop being a pussy while going out? Uh, well, you, you man up and you go out and you take action and you don't overthink a lot of these things. Um, that's a vague, kind of a vague question and so there's kind of my vague answer. Um, what's the ultimate carefree mindset for attracting girls? We'll get to that in secret number three. Uh, it sucks, all right, you guys are talking to Blankinator. Um, I'm funny guy, and almost in any situation, I want to find something positive or make some jokes about the negatives, so I don't be, so I know how to be serious, but mostly I'm making jokes, so is that good or bad? Um, here's the thing, man. Make a joke if you find it funny, right? This is, this is all about, this is a separate topic. I can talk about this in a separate live stream if you guys want me to, but it's all about self-amusement, right? Self-amusement is one of those ways that you can convey that you're nonchalant, you're carefree, you're, you don't really have a lot of agendas here, you're not pushing for some outcome, you're not outcome dependent, and that self-amusement is one tool to convey that side of your personality. And what is self-amusement? Self-amusement is really just cracking jokes that you find funny in the moment, even if, Nobody else understands the joke, right? It's almost like an inside joke with yourself. Um, for example, uh, a girl I had met in a hot tub, it was a, it was a pool party and we were sitting in the hot tub. Um, this is like a year ago, a year or two ago at my old apartment complex in Scottsdale, Arizona. And she asked me what I do. And here's the thing, if you go out and you approach a lot of women, you're gonna find that the first three to five minutes of every conversation with a girl you start talking to is almost exactly the same every single time. At some point, they're gonna ask you, what do you do? Where are you from, right? And those are just natural questions that come across, um, especially if they're not a good uh, conversationalist themselves. So she asked me, what do I do? And I literally told her, oh, I'm, I'm an artist. And, and she was like, what? I was like, yeah, you see like, you know, those paintings on the side of buildings? And she goes, oh, like graffiti. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those guys. I, I paint those. She goes, what? I was like, yeah, it's, it's more of a, a lifestyle, right? <laughs> it's not, it's not, a, not necessarily a career, more of a lifestyle, you know? And she thought I was serious, but to me, I was saying those things in the moment because I thought it was funny. It was a way to switch things up for myself. And because it, it, it fueled my own good emotions, it was like an inside joke with myself those good emotions and those good feelings that I was feeling rubbed off. Emotions are contagious. And she was feeling, um, you know, the charisma, the, the attraction in that moment, the sexual tension, right? So it all comes back to self-amusement. And self-amusement is like an inside joke with yourself. Um, all right. This has nothing to do with mentality, but what do I do when a girl is staring at me um, but and I'm feeling awkward and I want to look away, but I know I should be alpha and maintain eye contact. What's your advice? I'm feeling awkward and want to look away, but I know how to be alpha and main eye contact. What's your advice? Uh, dude, same thing. Um, don't overthink it. Think war, not battle. At the end of the day, are you going to go up and talk to her or not? Right? If you, if you don't know her um, and she's making eye contact with you, yes, you should definitely go and talk to her. And if you're not, then it doesn't matter if you make eye contact with her or not because you're not gonna sleep with her, you're not gonna talk to her, you're not gonna get a number, so what does it ma fucking matter, right? But if you're gonna go up and talk to her, doesn't really fucking matter if she if you hold the eye contact because that's really her way of inviting you to come up and start the conversation. So think war, not battle. All right, so 
I'm gonna take another drink and then we'll get to secret number three, closer secret number three. All right. <clears throat> By the way, uh, once again, thank you guys for being here. Um, closer secret number three, baby step seduction. All right, baby step seduction. All right, every good closer doesn't push for his outcome, right, all at once, right? Because if you go over the top pushing for a certain outcome, it's gonna come through as needy, it's gonna come through as outcome dependent, it's gonna put you out of the present moment to where you can't read her emotions and lead her from there to where you're gonna be in your head, you're gonna be logically thinking and it's gonna fuck up everything, right? Good seducers know this, good closers with women know this, so they take baby steps, they know let me ask you this. Have you guys ever heard of the law of micro commitments? I want to see yeses or nos. Um, if not, I will explain it. Um, but let me know if you guys have heard of the law of micro commitments or the law of energy rationale. The law of energy rationale. Let me know if you guys have ever heard of those. Dark Chief. Nope. Uh, Heldarian. Sometimes that's all they want and string you along. No, please explain. Never have. All right. So the law of micro commitments basically means that at any given point in time, you are either making, your action is either taking one step closer to a certain outcome or one step closer to the exact opposite outcome, right? So for me, um, this is just a personal example. I'm trying to build raw dating advice up from the ground up, from scratch, right? via YouTube, via email, via products, right? And I'm trying to become the number one dating coach in the world. I don't know how you get named one number one dating coach in the world. I may already be there, but I want it to be a fucking no question about it. We have the best following. We have the best people who follow Raw Dating Advice and we get the best results. Now, for me to do that, I have to be extreme, extremely committed to taking the right actions every single day throughout the day, meaning that, um, I'm right now it's 154 p.m. on a Sunday I could either be talking to my YouTube following giving them value raw dating advice and just doing dating advice right or I could be playing video games right which commitment and which action am I gonna take because whatever action I choose in the moment is gonna be a small micro commitment in the direction towards success or failure all right so that's the law of micro commitments so every single day are you gonna choose um, you know moving one step closer to being a self-made millionaire or are you gonna go on Facebook for five minutes, right? That's your choice and it's a little micro commitment in that moment which one you wanna choose in the moment. So women are the exact same. Anytime she does a micro commitment to investing energy into you in your seduction, in your interaction with her, then she's actually becoming more committed to actually you and her ending up behind closed doors with you closing, closing, becoming a closer with that woman, sealing the deal, right? So anytime you can get a girl to make a micro commitment towards you, that's good. And you just threw that, do that over and over and over again throughout the night. That way, when it comes time for her to think, um, you know, am I gonna sleep with this guy or not? She's already so committed to you because of all the, the thousands of micro commitments she's already made throughout the night towards you, right? It's for example, this is like psychology 101, marketing 101, sales 101. If you can get a person saying yes to you over and over and over again, the likelihood that they'll say yes to you on the 20th time is very high if they've already said yes 19 times before that. However, if they've said no 19 times before that, do you think it's gonna be hard for you or easy for you to get a yes on the 20th time? The answer is whatever commitment, the, the majority of their commitments that's kind of gonna be a good predictor for what the next thing she's gonna do is, right? So if she's already said no to you 19 times, it's gonna be hard for you to get a yes on the 20th time. But if she's already made 20 micro commitments towards you, she said yes to you essentially 20 times, then on the 21st time, naturally she's gonna say yes again because she's already got the momentum going that way, right? So baby step seduction. Um, and this works on all different kinds of levels. So conversationally, if you can get a girl qualifying to you, maybe she's telling you this story um, where it's really just like painting her in a positive light. If a girl's telling you a, a, a long story or any type of story to make herself look cool, that she's qualifying to you, right? That's a micro commitment towards you, which you like, and you would reward that with validation. Or um, if she says yes to you, you ask her to do something and she's like, okay, right? That's a micro commitment. Or one of my favorites, the Benjamin Franklin trick. For those of you guys who have 
Uh, 107 proven ways to get the girl. Do you remember the Benjamin Franklin trick? Give me a yes or no. And if so, um, let, let's interact with this and talk about what it is for all the other guys who don't know what it is, all right? Um, because it's very cool and it's a really good way to get a micro commitment from her. In fact, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a big micro commitment, if that makes sense. That's an oxymoron. But what is it? What is the Benjamin Franklin trick for those of you guys who know? <clears throat> Hell fucking yes. I love it. King AI. I know you've probably done it before because any guy who takes action on the Benjamin Franklin trick knows the power of it. Uh, Dark Chief, I'm getting your book next week, then I'll know all the tricks. Yes. Um, better to invite her out somewhere, public place, starting stating that you need to know in person first before moving on. Um, that is not the Benjamin Franklin trick. Basically getting her to do you favors. All right. Um, yeah, essentially, but I'll give you a specific one that you guys can use. All right. So, uh, back in the day, Benjamin Franklin had, the, he did this trick all the time to literally make the people who hated him, his friends, right? How do you, how do you take someone who absolutely hates you? They hate the way you think, they hate the, everything you say, they hate everything you do and represent in this world. But Benjamin Franklin was able to convert that person into a loyal and dedicated friend. How did he do it? It was this one trick and you can use it very easily, let's say, to get a girl to start making more micro commitments to you. So if she's, if the interaction is going very positively, bust out this trick and it'll work out for you. Or if she's kind of said no to you like three times in a row, bust out this trick and it can flip her and it'll be a 100% different story, right? And it's not money and it does not involve money. I promise you this. All you have to do is get her to make a small, do a small favor for, for, for you. So if it's on the date, if you're at the library, whatever it is, right? Um, all you gotta do is be like, hey, uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Would you mind watching my drink while I go? That's a small favor. Or here, uh, I don't wanna take my jacket to the bathroom with me. Would you mind holding my jacket until I come back? I'll be back in like five minutes, right? If you can get her to hold something physical of yours while you go to the bathroom or go to the bar or whatever you gotta do, right? That's a small favor she's doing for you. And when you come back, not only has she probably been holding this or watching this object for you the entire time, but that whole time she's thinking, huh, I wonder when Pastor is gonna come back or is this just his creative way of trying to ditch me is getting him to getting me to watch his drink, right? Did he just ditch me? Oh my God, and now she's wondering about you. She's not certain about how you feel about her. Do you approve of her or not? And even if she's not consciously thinking these things, just the fact that she did that favor for you, she will automatically start liking you more in the future, right? So Benjamin Franklin, um, for example, when he did this, it was back in the day, he would have, uh, he would have literally like his competitors in politics or like someone who hated him, right? If he would literally just like go up to him one day and be like, hey, um, I know you have this like really awesome book. Um, would you mind if I borrowed that book from you for a little bit? I'll, I promise you I'll return it next week, right? And obviously it's just like a, a small innocent book. And when they lend him the, the book, afterwards they would actually start to like him more because why else would they lend him the book it's kind of like backwards rationalizing their actions so they say yes to doing the favor and he he gives you the book right and you borrow it you return it a week later and naturally if you asked if someone else asked him huh why'd you lend him the book he would have to say i guess it's because I, I think um you know benjamin franklin's franklin's a stand-up dude he's a, he's an okay guy i trust him right they're backwards rationalizing their actions for doing a small favor for you. So that's a Benjamin Franklin trick. And if you've ever used it in a bar or if you've read the stories of me using it in a bar or nightclub with women, you'll know how powerful it is, all right? Um, so that's it in a nutshell, but that's one of the small ways to get a micro commitment towards you, right? And the law of energy rationale is similar, but parallel. And it basically just means that the more a girl invests into you, whether it's thought energy or money or just time in front of you, time, any investment she's making in you, the more she does that, the more committed to you she is, right? And this, a lot of the things I teach are actually based on psychology. And if you guys are curious, I can give you some of the books that I read to learn a lot about a lot of this stuff. But for the most part, I'll read one or two books about psychology and I'll read those over and over and over again. And then I'll go out and take a lot of action and 
go back and try to piece the puzzle pieces together to think, all right, how does this one psychology thing about human nature apply to this interaction, right? And that's what I'm doing for you is I'm tying that that loop, right? I'm, I'm making it obvious for you so that way you can consciously use this stuff in the future, right? So um, this is really just like the anything, right? The more someone commits in one direction, the more committed they'll be to that direction in the future, right? So baby step seduction. So if you're, for example, on a date with a girl and you wanna know how to get first date sex, um, not only are you getting micro commitments throughout the night conversationally, but also don't you think it would be a big jump for you to go from venue where you're on the date to your bedroom, right? That's kind of a big jump. So rather than going from venue to bedroom, cause right there could convey to her like, oh, maybe I'm being too easy right now. This could lead to me getting negatively judged by this guy or other people I know, right? All girls want the plausible deniability of being able to say, oh, we were just having a good time and then it, it, everything was just so good that it just happened. She wants that plausible deniability of afterwards when she's talking to her friends about having sex with you, she wants to be able to say dot, 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 I don't know, it just happened. He just, it just, he just gets me, right? It just worked out that way. And I didn't plan on that, right? Because obviously she doesn't want to be slut shamed, but it just happened. She wants that plausible deniability. So rather than going from venue to your bedroom, baby step it, baby step seduction, right? So maybe you go to vet from venue A to venue B, which is down the street, you walk down the street, and then from ven venue B to venue C, which is um, taking a walk outside and sitting on a bench that's close to your car, right? <laughs> so baby step, baby step, baby step, and now you're on a bench, you're interacting with her, and um, you're like, you know what? Uh, have you ever had a Moscow mule? And she'll go, no, you go, oh my God, you have to have a Moscow mule. And not only do you have to have a Moscow mule, you have to have it with the copper cups because the copper cups make a Moscow mule, uh, you know, just tastier because of the chemical reactions with the copper, right? And then you, she goes, oh, where can we get those? And you'll be like, well, I actually have some back in my place, um, but you can come only if you promise to keep your hands to yourself and I'll make you a Moscow mule. And then I got to get going later on because um, I got to be up early, right? If you say something like that, and for those of you guys who know the 107 Proven Ways or, or who have read chapter five on barriers, you'll know exactly what I just did there. But um, it makes it very easier for, for her to say yes to going back to your place for another drink. And what happens back to your place? It's one baby step going back to your place, which obviously your place has a bedroom where you can be like, all right, <laughs> you, leave, you start making out with her on the couch after you guys are drinking some Moscow mules, very easy for you, very natural for you to go to the bedroom, right? Baby step. You're never pushing for the end goal, you're pushing for the one next step in the sequence that's one step closer to the end goal. Does this make sense? All good closers understand this and they use it in every interaction no matter where they are. Whether it's on a first date or on, you know, they approach her at a bar or nightclub or they approach her at, you know, during the day, on the street, in a grocery store, whatever it may be, you gotta baby step it. And you don't push for the huge outcome, you push for the next step in um, moving this one step closer to you ending up with the girl. Does this make sense? How do you seduce the shy girl, the girl that doesn't flirt with you or give attention when sober? She's shy, but when drinking, she's really fucking likes you and shows it. How do you close it? Um, the odor besk. You guys have a lot of creative names. I appreciate this because sometimes I'm not as creative and seeing some of you guys' comments or names makes me more creative. It sparks the, the creative, uh, part of my brain. So the odor besk, I don't know what that means. Oh, Theodore Besk. Oh God, that's your name. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, great name. <laughs> and and um, uh, to answer your question, uh, I would say don't overthink it, right? If she's into you, she's into you. You just got to know how to lead it forward using baby step seduction, using a lot of things that we talk about. As long as you understand human nature, you understand the seductive process, and you understand how to baby step things forward throughout the seductive process, then you will be setting your, yourself up for, for success. Whether or not she's the type of girl who's really shy, or she's really outgoing, or she's really sexual, doesn't matter. If you have the core understanding of where to lead this next, right? That's all that matters. Now, 
from there, you gotta be able to lead it forward without um, seeming like you're pushing for a certain outcome. You gotta be able to lead it forward without her thinking that um, you're moving too fast and she's going to be judged negatively because it's moving too fast. You gotta be able to lead it forward in a natural way to where it's not like kind of awkward where it's like, oh, um, we're back in my place. Um, do you wanna come in, right? It's kind of awkward. It's not like a natural transition. And all this stuff just takes practice or learning from people who have made those mistakes before and learning how they overcame those mistakes, right? So that's how you do it. So I wouldn't, I don't care if she's shy or not. It's really just about being the type of guy who can relate to her in the moment and attract her in the moment and lead it forward. So what I would say is for the shy girls, actually for one of my programs, the magnetic personality formula, one of the um, upgrades that you can add on to it is something that I call the shy guy formula. Um, and that'll actually show you a lot about um, how to interact with shy girls. But shy girls, um, in general, I would say that you don't wanna be doing huge pushes, huge breaks of rapport with them because um, they're already somewhat low in self-esteem, AKA that's like why they're shy, right? So if you take a girl who's already feeling maybe a little bit self-conscious around you, whether or not it's because she just sees you as this super attractive guy, or she's just a naturally self-conscious, anxious person, or she's just shy, if you do a huge break in rapport, a huge tease, a huge push, like, you know, any take any playfully challenging line that you've ever learned, right? In general, those girls who are super shy probably won't react as positively to it because they'll take offense to it because they're already feeling a little bit self-conscious. So you gotta understand those types of things and be able to read her in the moment. Is she the type of girl who's easily offended or not? And then go from there. So that's that's what I would say, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, man, so let's, let's move on. But I'm really liking these questions. Remember, uh, whoever asked the best question about sealing the deal or um, being a closer with women, right? The topic of today's live stream. Before the end of the live stream, I will give you a $500 course for free. You will win that for engaging with me and asking that question. And just a reminder, we're uh, just over halfway through here, man. Um, I'll, I'll try to not drag this out too long. Try to not go on too many more tangents. But uh, if we can get 100 likes and 100 people on the live stream, everybody in attendance live will also get a badass gift from me to you for hitting that benchmark because we're trying to grow these live streams that we're doing every Sunday. And also, if you've been here the entire time or if you're just tuning in, make sure you tune in till the end because I'm also gonna have a pretty cool surprise for you guys just for engaging with me and staying till the end. All right, so, closer secret number four. We've already kind of alluded to this one, but I'm about to go into a major detail about it is always assume the upside. Always assume the upside. Always assume all positive things. Always assume that things are on between you and this girl unless proven otherwise, right? Innocent until proven guilty. She's into you until you have clear evidence of uh, something to tell you that she's not, right? So let me ask you this, how many times have you changed in your life? Have you changed your behavior around someone simply because you thought that they were mad at you only to find out later on that it was all in your head? Has that ever happened to you? Let me know, right? Let me see, let me know in the comments if that's ever happened to you. You've, you've changed your behavior because maybe someone who didn't, they didn't return your text or they were kind of like um, short with you over text or maybe they hung up on you on accident. You thought, oh, I think, I wonder if they're mad at me. And you changed your behavior moving forward because of it. Even if it's just a subtle change in your behavior, maybe like you were more just like, walk, felt like you were walking on eggshells around them the next time you saw them. And then you found out later on, oh no, they just had to go because they were in traffic or um, you know, for whatever reason, right? It happens all the time. And I'm seeing you guys on comments are saying that this, this has happened to you, right? Face palm, yeah, LOL. Yes, I've done it. It's happened to everybody, man. Now let me ask you this. How many times have you lost sleep wondering if a girl likes you simply because she did something to interrupt your pattern? I'll give you a personal example. There's this one girl who I used to hang out with 
um, in my early 20s, before I got really good at game, right? And every time we would stop hanging out, when we'd go our separate ways, we'd always give each other a long and extended hug, right? And this one time, we hung out, and we laid in a bed all night, and we cuddled all night. I didn't even sleep with her. And um, the next morning, she didn't give me a hug. She just walked straight to her car, and I walked straight to my car. She didn't give me the hug, and it fucked with my head. I lost so much sleep wondering, does this girl like me or not anymore? Did she lose interest in me? Is she mad at me? How many of you guys can relate to this? A girl did something that like interrupted your pattern. She did something that was out of the norm between you guys and it, it fucked with your head. You were, you were sat there sitting there wondering what's going on. Does she like me? Does she not like me? And you lost sleep over it. Yes, 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 it happens to everybody. Yup, I've noticed it. Usually I try to fix it by telling her I'm joking, which mostly makes things worse. Yeah, dude, this stuff happens to everybody. Everybody. Um, let me ask you this, last question. How many times have you not asked for a girl's number or not made the move because you were uncertain about a positive result? You were uncertain if she was gonna accept it or not. You didn't know if she was gonna reject your advances or not. How many of you guys have held yourself back from making the move or going for the phone number or asking her on the date because you were uncertain if she likes you or not? How many guys have done that? Yes times 10, Owen Brooks. Every fucking time. <laughs> uh, usually makes moves, but I've done them in the past. I do it all the time. Yes, dude, we've all done it. Now here's the thing that closers understand. Closers understand. Remember, always assume the upside unless proven otherwise. In all those questions I just asked you, it was all up here. You saw one thing happen and there's two different ways that you could interpret it or Maybe it just meant nothing and they didn't even think anything of it, right? But in your own head, you created this scenario that drove you crazy and that, those thinking, that thoughts in your own head, the closer's mentality, the lack of your mentality, aware, your mental awareness in that moment, fucked you up. It changed your actions moving forward and it fucked you up and preventing, it prevented you from getting the girl in that situation, right? So, always assume the upside unless proven otherwise. So. Let's make this a practical example. If you're, let's say, at a bar or at a party or somewhere, you're talking to a girl and she's not really investing in the conversation all that much. Personal example, I was on a date with this really hot girl, super, super hot girl, so hot that I was finding myself really trying to push for an outcome only because she wasn't giving me much to work with. We would hung out several times, we went on several dates, and dude, I wish I had a picture of this girl that I could show you guys. Um, <laughs> and she just wasn't giving me much to work with conversationally. She wasn't showing very good body language towards me on the dates. Maybe her legs were crossed away from me, her arms were crossed. But in those moments, because she wasn't giving me much, it made me not only like push for the outcome even more, which prevented me from actually getting this girl. Um, and this was actually two years ago, back when I lived in Scottsdale still. See, we're not all perfect. At the time I was still giving dating advice, but this still happened to me, right? So remember, nobody's perfect. Kobe still loses games. Kobe didn't make the playoffs most of his last later seasons, right? Nobody's perfect, but it only matters if you recognize your mistakes and self-correct moving forward, which is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm opening up to you guys and showing you a time where I failed with a girl. And here's why, because I was starting to assume the downside. I was starting to assume that she wasn't into it. But in reality, what you gotta realize is that us guys, we're so in our own heads and we're so thinking about how to improve ourselves, how to get better next time, how to change our behavior moving forward so we're more attractive, more charismatic, more carefree, nonchalant in the moment, right? And we're so worried about ourselves that we forget that most girls have terrible game themselves. Most girls are terrible conversationalists, right? And because a conversation doesn't work out well, we put that pressure on ourselves, which you know, good leaders tend to do. They take at responsibility for failures. So that way, you know, that's a good leader. A good leader can take any team and be like, you fucked up, but it was my fault, right? So in the moment, realize that if it's not going great, she hasn't given, she hasn't 
she's like, she's still sitting there talking to you, right? For me, I'm talking, I'm literally giving my, the, the past version of myself this lecture, right? She's still on the date with you. She's still sitting there talking to you in conversation. She's still entertaining the conversational topics that you bring up. Even if she's not giving you much to work with and you're the one carrying the conversation, that could be because she's a terrible conversationalist, but that doesn't mean she doesn't like you, right? If she didn't like you, she would not respond to your text. She wouldn't agree to see you in person. She wouldn't come over to your house, right? So always assume the upside until blatantly proven otherwise. So if you approach a girl and she's not giving you much to work with, right? But she hasn't told you to leave and she's still sitting there, standing there in front of you, not leaving the conversation physically, like walking away, then assume she's still into you. Assume it's still on. And I'll give you an example. Um, I had, a, I had a really interesting background, right? Because a lot of you guys, I kind of talked about this a little bit. And what do you do when proven otherwise? Dude, you have the abundance mindset and you say, fuck it and move on to the other one. Every other person in this world has a vagina, right? Meaning that every other person in this world, if you self-correct moving forward, will have the potential to be attracted to you. Now, obviously not every person is someone that you're gonna wanna sleep with. However, if you understand what makes women attracted, meaning you have my book, 107 Proven Ways to Get the Girl. You understand how to create that, um, that reaction of attraction and you self-correct moving forward and you qualify girls that you are actually into so that way they start selling themselves to you. Dude, that's what you do. You don't beat yourself up about it if she blatantly walks away from the conversation, right? You, if, you, if she gives you evidence that she doesn't wanna to talk to you or she, she's not into you, fuck it, move on. There's a girl standing right next to her she's, who's probably even hotter than she is and it would probably be way better in bed, all right? So that's the answer to your question. But um, my point is that um, always assume all positive things. If she hasn't physically left the conversation or if she's still agreeing to meet up with you, assume it's still on. So like I was saying, I had a really interesting background because in high school, um, my best friend growing up, we grew up next to each other. Um, we lived next door to each other since we were like three years old, right? Best friends growing up. However, we kind of went two separate directions in life. When we got to high school, we were still best friends. We still, still hung out almost every day. However, he was the star of the basketball team, star of the football team, star of every team. Um, when the yearbook on our senior year came around, the, everybody who was on the yearbook staff asked him, hey, do you want to be voted um, best looking in our, in our class or most athletic. And he chose most athletic. They gave him the choice, right? He was that guy and he got every single girl he wanted. He slept with every girl who I ever thought was hot in my high school. And I did not. I was still his best friend, but I was the exact opposite. I wasn't hooking up with a lot of girls. I wasn't the star of the basketball team, the football team, all that stuff. I was on them, but I wasn't the star, right? So here's the thing, man. That's a natural closer. That guy didn't have to study game to become a closer because he naturally has these behaviors installed because people are like telling him he's this, he's that he's this type of way. They act towards him like he's this type of guy. And so obviously his behaviors, his beliefs about himself, they come through in the way that I'm telling you how to do right now, right? So he's naturally like that. He's a natural for lack of a better term. I am not. I remember specifically, when we were sophomores in high school, um, there was this one girl, she was like the hottest girl in our school, right? And she was one of those girls who was shy, but she was also really hot. And it was like, she became hot as she matured when we were like sophomores in high school, right? And so every guy started to like her. And so my friend obviously had a crush on her and he, this girl for, for whatever reason kept telling him, oh, I don't wanna date you, I don't like you, right? And she was giving him all this evidence, right? Uh, that she didn't want to be, you know, her, his girlfriend. I remember he said to me when we we're driving home, right? Cause we live next to a door to each other. He said to me, oh, she'll be my girlfriend. She just doesn't know it yet. Right. Meaning that he still through all of this assumed all positive things. She'll be my girlfriend. She just doesn't know it yet. And he said it with kind of like uh, in kind of a joking tone, but kind of serious. She ended up becoming his girlfriend for the next two years, bro. <laughs> and they dated until the end of high school, right? So why is this? It's because he understands 
the, the, one of the key fundamentals, secret fundamentals, secret number four, is always assume the upside until blatantly proven otherwise. Even in this guy's situation, she was telling him she's not into him, but because he was so confident, because he believed in himself, and he was almost kind of like cocky in a way, he still got his way because he assumed all positive things. How do you think he interacted with her move, like the next time he saw him after he told me that, right? Do you think he was apprehensive? He felt like he was walking on eggshells. He was apologetic about um, still showing his interest in her because she told him that she wasn't into him or he was still nonchalant, carefree, outgoing, happy, laughing, cracking jokes the next time he saw her because in his own head, in his own state, his emotional state, he assumed positive things and he didn't let any of the negative stuff affect his own emotions and actions moving forward. So always assume the upside when it comes to seducing women, all great closers with women understand this. So when you approach a girl at a bar, she's not giving you much to work with, but she's still sitting there talking to you, assume she's into you, all right? So this brings me into secret number five. And before I get to secret number five, uh, I do wanna give away this $500 course. So. Let's see some questions that you guys got. <laughs> what are some questions that you guys got about this topic that we've been talking about for the last 80 minutes? I'm excited to see this kind of stuff. Ah. Roy, if you're surrounded by the same women at one time often and flirt with many of them, what's the best approach to close on them one at a time for sex without coming off as a womanizer? Well, Roy, uh, good question. Um, I want to ask you, here's the thing, man. Good coaches, I consider myself a dating coach, obviously. I do this as my job, my career. Um, good coaches ask questions when they're asked a question, right? Rather than giving you a straight up answer. So you asked me, uh, how do you close the deal, seal the deal with these girls without coming off as a womanizer? I want to ask you, why don't you want to come off as a womanizer? What's the downside there, right? Because here's the thing, man, uh, and I'll give you an example. I went to lunch or dinner, sushi, the sushi place is down the street if you ever come and visit me in, in Phoenix, Arizona, where I live right now. There's a sushi place literally right outside my window, right? We went to dinner the other night, and this guy, he's the type of guy who, um, he doesn't have a job, but he somehow is able to invest in a lot of things. He has a lot of money to, to throw around, right? I went, I'm not saying he throws it around, but I point blank asked him at dinner. I was like, yo, uh, why, how, do, how do you make your money, right? How are, you, how are you getting your source of income? And he was like, ah, good question, man. You know, you have every right to ask that question. And he's like almost apologetic in what he's, the answer he's about to give me. He's like, you, you know, you have every right to answer that, ask me that. And you know, um, the truth is, uh, I, I got a trust fund when I was a kid and you know, it's not like a, it wasn't like a million dollars by any means, but you know, it was a good amount and I use that to like travel and invest and stuff. And he was like, he was almost like ashamed of the fact that he had money put away for himself. Right. And at the same time, this guy is also trying to become a successful entrepreneur and he's using a lot of this money to invest in himself and his own business. And I told him, I was like, dude, I already see in you a huge success blocker, if you will that's gonna keep you back subconsciously. And it's the fact that you feel bad about having money. You think money is inherently a bad thing. Even though you can consciously tell yourself, I wanna get more money, because you're apprehensive about telling people you have money, because you think people are gonna judge you negatively, you assume the downside that you have money from a trust fund or whatever, that, that right there, that core belief about money is going to manifest itself in ways that are gonna keep you back from doing the necessary actions, taking the necessary risks to get more money in your own business moving forward. So for you, if you are believing that women or guys who are womanizers, guys who have a lot of success with a lot of different women, right? Even if other people know about it, if you believe that being a womanizer is bad, right? And this is all depending on your definition of a womanizer, but the way you ask the question, I assume that you just think that it's, um, a guy who has a lot of success with a lot of women in one particular area, right? I wouldn't say that's a bad thing. I would say that if you think it's a bad thing, then it's only gonna prevent you from succeeding with those women moving forward because it's a subconscious block 
that you have in your own self, right? It's kind of like that movie Inception to where one small idea planted in one of your dreams, right? A small thought can manifest itself into the decisions that you make in your everyday life, right? I know that's a movie, but it's very similar. You have this one core belief and it's holding you back when you're in the moment talking to this one chick, right? Maybe you're, maybe you're at a party and you wanna sleep with five girls who are in your class and you go to this party to meet up with this one chick who's in your class, but you go there and you realize that four, those other four girls are also at the same party, but because you think that if they think of you as a womanizer, then they're not gonna wanna get with you, then that's gonna keep you from doing the necessary risks to get this one girl here who you're actually meeting up with because you don't want these other girls to see you being a womanizer with this other girl, right? That's how this can hold you back. But if you didn't have the belief that being a womanizer is bad, then when you're in front of this one girl and you're talking to her, you can be your full charismatic self, you can be your full, the most magnetic version of yourself and not have any outcome dependence. You don't care about how other people are judging you, especially these other girls. In fact, you understand if you've ever bought my book, 107 Proving Ways to Get the Girl, or you've been following raw dating advice for a while, that if a girl sees you getting attraction from another girl, she'll actually be more attracted to you, right? And it all goes down and back into how women become attracted to men. These days, women, they can't look at a group of guys and instantly go, that's the alpha male, right? Guys these days, alpha male, beta males, I don't even like to use those terms, but biologically, we're tribal creatures, we have like a leader of a group. Donald Trump, he's technically the alpha male of America right now because he's the elected leader, right? But like a, a woman can't necessarily look into a group of guys and instantly go, that's the alpha, all those guys are betas, I'm gonna, gonna go sleep with the alpha. The way she does it now, these days, is she looks at the guy who's getting the most attention from the other women and she, she assumes that if he's getting a lot of attention from other women, he's hanging out with these other women, whether or not he's sleeping with them, she's gonna naturally be more attracted to him because she's gonna assume that he's the attractive guy of the group, right? So I would say that being a womanizer is not a bad thing. It's actually a thing that's gonna get you more success with women is if you can actually give the, the impression, at least socially or through the stories that you tell, that you are highly pre-selected by other women, if that makes sense. All right, so Owen Brooks, damn, thank you. Bo Jian, amen, thank you. <laughs> How, all right, uh, move out of Alaska. Uh, Roy, I don't think it's bad. My assumption was if I messed up with one, it would shy the others away. I got that, I got you though, thanks. All right, yeah man, so yeah, let's talk more about that. Um, I would say that uh, I don't think it will, right? I guess it depends on if, it really depends on the context, right? Do these girls know each other? Are they like best friends and all five of them are roommates and you're trying to sleep with all five of them, right? Obviously, if you creep the fuck out of one of them, that's gonna seep into the other four, right? Just because they're all friends, they all share the same values and, right, going back to negative judgment. Let's say, they're all roommates, they all know each other, and they're all connected, they talk to each other, right? They run in the same circle. If you fuck up with girl number one, right? You fuck up with her, she hates you. She goes and talks shit to all these other four girls. Even if the other four girls are attracted to you, girl number two, or any of the other ones, they're not gonna wanna sleep with you because they know that if she goes and sleeps with you, even if she's still into you, then she'll get negatively judged by this girl and potentially by the other three girls who this girl was talking shit to, right? So if, if, if you know, if, if, if they all know each other, then I think your worry is valid there. But remember, assume all positive things, self-correct moving forward, right? Uh, learn the, the laws of seduction, what we've been talking about on these live streams and my videos and my books and my courses, and you should be good to go, man. Um, so that's, that's your answer, the answer to that question. Uh, let's get another couple of questions so I can give away this um, $500 course. Um, by the way, I'm seeing you guys wanna connect on IG. Awesome, man, you guys should definitely connect, uh, connect on IG. I, I don't know if you guys are, are feeling this, but my vibe from these live streams that I'm getting is that we truly are like a family. Like I'm recognizing some of you guys' names um, and I know uh, right now we got like 13K subs on YouTube. One day we're gonna have a million subs on YouTube. This is gonna be the biggest fucking movement of guys becoming the most confident, charismatic, and courageous version of themselves. And I can't wait for that to happen. It's already happening 
and it's only gonna grow from here. And you guys are here from the start. So thank you for that and definitely connect with each other, right? We should all grow together. This is, if you wanna think about it, this is like a mastermind of us guys, right? We're all trading ideas, we're all growing with each other and I'm just here to deliver value, do what I can, you know what I'm saying? So, we are a tribe, yes sir. By the way, <laughs> um, we should come up with a tribe name. I know Raw Dating Advice is kinda like this overall overarching brand name for us, but if we can come up with a badass tribe name, that would be dope too, you know what I'm saying? Um, this feels like a community and this is becoming a thing I look forward to every week and I definitely feel the vibes. Patrick, all right, is assuming the best outcome basically a self-fulfilling prophecy, as in women will sniff that sniff out that you're not assuming the best outcome and react accordingly? I wouldn't even say that it's that um, blatant. I would say that assuming all positive things keeps you from making the mistakes that assuming negative things would, if that makes sense, right? So from my personal example, when I started to assume that this girl wasn't into me, even though she was willing to meet up with me on dates, willing to have hours of conversation, even though I was the one doing all the work to keep the conversations going, um, um, when I started to think that she wasn't into me, I started to assume negative things and it actually ended up not working out in my favor. But an example of my friend who I told you about, even though he was getting evidence that this girl wasn't into him, he still assumed positive things where he, and that allowed him to not make the mistakes of being apologetic about being his presence or his interest in her. Um, he, he was still able to crack jokes that he would normally crack. He, was, he didn't feel like he was walking on eggshells around this girl in the future. And because you know, it didn't affect his emotional state at all, um, that came across as like the least needy thing that he could have possibly done, right? When this girl sees that even though she rejected him technically, um, even though he was unfazed about it, what does that say about him? It says that he's so abundant and he's so carefree that he knows that even if she says no to him, he's gonna have a great life anyways. He'll meet another girl just as hot, if not better than him or her anyways, right? So assuming all positive things, doesn't directly get you the girl, it indirectly gets you the girl because it keeps you from making the mistakes that would, would prevent you from getting her, if that makes sense. So that's a good question. Um, Khalil Staples, I just came out of a 10 year relationship. It's crazy out here for me, Trip. For me, Trip. I, my name's not Trip, bro. I don't know if I should continue watching, reading this question, man. I know who Trip Advice is. We're actually, we, we, we're, we're cordial, we're acquaintances, but I'm not Trip. It's crazy out here for me. I stay in a small town where everyone knows everyone. That's a bunch of questions in one. Yo. <laughs> um, yeah, man, dude, here's the thing. I have a lot of clients, like private clients who just came out of a long relationship. If you're interested, in uh, becoming a private client, shoot me an email and we can talk about that. There's a small application that you'd fill out and then we'd hop on the phone to see if you're a good fit and then we'd go from there. Um, but a lot of my clients who do that, they are guys in your similar situation to where they're out of a long relationship, they don't necessarily um, know where to get started with getting back into the dating scene. But if you're in a small town and that's like the biggest thing holding you back is like, you're in a small town, everybody knows everybody, and um, if you fuck up with one girl, word can spread around, uh, it could potentially tarnish your own um, reputation, or um, there's just not a lot of options for you in that small town of yours. First piece of advice, raw dating advice, raw truth, um, it's not sexy, but it's like, dude, go to a different town. Right, I gave this. I was actually talking to a guy last night at a party. I'll tell you guys about this party in a second. Um, but I was telling, I was at a party, and this guy was telling me the same thing. He found out I was a dating coach. He's like, dude, I'm 36 years old. Uh, just got out of a long relationship, and in my town, there is not a lot of women to choose from. And I was like, why are you still living in that town? Right? It's not the most sexy advice, but it's like, dude, if you want to hook up with a hot girl, are you gonna go to the town with where there's no hot girls? No, it's like, it's like if you created a product, an information product, maybe you wrote your own book and you created a, a sales page to sell the book and you put that sales page on a blog from 1994. Do you think anybody's gonna buy the book even if the book is the best book in the world, right? If you put it on a blog from 1994 that nobody goes to anymore, are people gonna buy your book? No, because nobody goes to the blog from 1994 anymore. Right? Just like if you're in a small town and you're trying to get higher quality women and you're trying to improve your dating life, why are you hanging out in a small town still? Why are you not going out? Right? If you wanna get success with women and you, wanna, you want a lot of women or you want hotter women or you just want one awesome woman, you gotta figure out 
exactly what type of woman you want and then figure out where those girls are and then plant yourself in the middle of that stream of women, if that makes sense, right? You literally like, <laughs> if, you're, if you're trying to collect some water, are you gonna go to the fucking puddle on the street to collect water or are you gonna go to the fucking ocean? Go to the ocean, bro, <laughs> all right? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, I just got out of a six year relationship slash marriage myself, trying to work on dating again. Not a great dating scene here in Anchorage. Anchorage, I've never been to Alaska. I've heard good things about some towns in Alaska, um, but for the most part, I've heard Alaska's somewhat of a remote place. So again, um, if <laughs> two things. If you're in a small town or a town where there's not the type of women that you wanna be dating, go to a different town, that simple. If you can't afford to, save up the money and go. If you can't afford to and you don't wanna move, then get a, like a cheap apartment in a different town. I know several guys who had apartments in Scottsdale where they split it with the other people so they weren't paying the full rent, but they just had an apartment in a different town that, to where they could visit that place and have a place to stay, have a place to bring girls back to whenever they wanted because they had that cheap apartment right there in the middle of the stream of hot girls in the ocean when they're looking for a puddle, a bucket of water, you know? So that's my first piece of advice. Secondly, uh, you know, we have a whole range of guys who watch these live streams, watch these videos, invest in my courses, um, ranging from high school kids um, all the way to, to guys like yourself who are a little bit older, a little bit more experienced, out of a long marriage and just wanna get back into the dating scene, right? Doesn't matter where you are, but if you're the type of guy, and, and we'll get back into secret number five, the final secret of, of the closers mentality, um, but if you're the type of guy who craves more personalized coaching, I currently have one spot on my coaching roster. Uh, I normally have five guys on my coaching roster. I currently have one. If you're interested in that, shoot me an email uh, to my email, um, swaggersocialhelpdesk at gmail.com. Um, in fact, I'll write that in the comment section. Swaggersocialhelpdesk at gmail.com. And uh, we can, I'll send you the small questionnaire application that you can fill out, then we'll hop on the phone if you're, and then see if you're a good fit and we'll go from there. Um, but that said, let's get into secret number five of a closer's mentality, how to consistently seal the deal with the women that you are dating. All right, so closers always know how to create a magnetic aura on command, right? Now here's the thing, charisma, nonchalance, outgoing, being extroverted, being a magnetic person in the moment, this is not something that you are born with. Remember, avoid the born with it mentality. And it's not something that, you know, uh, only is only reserved for like a certain population of guys. In reality, it's something that you can consciously learn how to do and turn on at a given moment. Any, anytime you want, you just turn it on. It's like a switch, right? Give you an example. Does anybody here know who Norma Jean Mortensen is. Norma Jean Mortensen. Let me, let me put this name in the comments. Do you know who this girl is? Norma Jean Mortensen. Question marks, all right? One person doesn't know. Anybody else know? Don't Google it, no cheating here, all right? But if you know, let me know. Haldarian. Marilyn Monroe. So, who here has heard of Marilyn Monroe? Give me a hand, give me an emoji, give me a yes, give me a fuck yes, give me a, oh, I've seen that girl's pictures before. <laughs> um, tell us how to deal with alpha female. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, see, everybody's heard of Marilyn Monroe, nobody's heard of Norma Jean Mortensen. Now here's the thing, man. Norma Jean Mortensen, after she became Marilyn Monroe, went out in public, you know, hottest girl in the world, you know, most famous chick in the world, most famous model in the world, whatever, whatever she was, right? Everybody knew who she was, but she would go out in public and there's a specific story about this. Um, and if you wanna read this, uh, hear about this story or, you know, you can do research on her, Google it, this actually happened. She went out on a subway in New York City, right? While she was at the peak of her, her career as Norma Jean Mortensen, and she walked around town, nobody knew who she was until she stopped one stranger on the street and then said, hey, do you wanna meet Marilyn Monroe? And the person was like, oh yeah, that'd be great. And all she did was 
change your facial expression, change your stance, change your eye contact in the moment, and instantly she became Marilyn Monroe. And with her just like going into character, flipping the switch, turning it on in that moment, immediately everybody on the street recognized her. She had a crowd surrounding her. And it was just, it was a switch. It was something she turned on. She could turn it on or off, right? And it, obviously looks go into it. It's not like she looked like, Do like she, she didn't have such a distinct look like Donald Trump. Donald Trump couldn't do this because everybody knows what he looks like, right? But you know, a woman, if she doesn't have the right makeup on, if she has a different outfit on, she can look a lot of different ways, right? So that just goes to show you having a magnetic aura around you, this is something you can instantly turn on a given at a, Sometimes I suck at, suck at snapping. Um, you can turn it on, right? So guys who close with women know how to turn it on at a given moment. Uh, and any given moment, they can turn it on on command whenever they want, like a switch. Now, here's the thing, man. Um, if you're not currently the type of guy who can go out and have a lot of attraction from women, who can get uh, you know, just a lot of people interested in talking to you, interacting with you, you can learn how to do it. Because I wasn't always that guy. And now I am, and I'll give you a few stories to kind of talk about this, but it's like the reason why closers can do this is because I just, I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier, but if you, um, you know, women are always going to be attracted to the guy who has a lot of social proof going for him. Social proof, meaning that she sees you interacting positively with other women and other dudes, right? So for example, if you go out to a nightclub and there's a huge line for everybody waiting to get into the nightclub and you roll up to the nightclub. You just got there. You don't wait in line. You walk to the front of the line. You, you, you shake hands, give a little nice handshake and a hug to the guy, the door guy, and he lifts the red rope for you and lets you in and you skip the line, right? Every single girl in that line who just saw that instantly became attracted to you. Why? Because she just saw that you had social proof. You knew the door guy, he liked you, you seem to be someone who's kind of important and it doesn't even have to be that big. It can be as simple as a woman seeing you talking to a girl and the girl's laughing at something you said, right? It's really that simple. However, guys who close with women consistently, they can go into any environment, turn on this magnetic aura for themselves and almost create a social circle around them of people who, who at least have been in conversation with you and if they haven't talked to you yet, they wanna to talk to you or they're curious to know who you are, right? That's something you can do anywhere. This is how I can go into a place like Miami, right? And I'll go into a nightclub in Miami and I've only been there once and I did this on a boot camp there, but I'll go into a, a place where I've never been with people where I've, who I've never met and within 30 minutes, I'll have a, an entire side of that bar um, like me, trust me, wanna know who I am, and think I'm some big deal, when in reality, I just turn on this, this magnetic aura around me, right? So, little story. I haven't been to Scottsdale in literally like a year, until um, I wanna say last weekend, right? So for a lot of you guys who have been keeping up with my stuff, um, who, are, who, who follow me on my email list, right? You know I used to live in Scottsdale, Arizona. About a year and a half ago, I moved to Phoenix, Arizona. They're about 20 minutes away, but they're two completely separate like cliques of people, right? And I just wanted to experience something different. Scottsdale is very clubby. There's a lot of hot girls, there's a lot of plastic surgery, um, a lot of like beauty there, right? Um, so I went back uh, two weekends ago with a guy who I was telling you I went to sushi with uh, right down the street. We went to Scottsdale, went into a club, and this club used to be called Cake, now it's called something else. But uh, I still knew the door guy who worked at, at this place. He used to be the door guy at Cake, he was like this, the, the VIP host or whatever. He's working at the same place now, even though it's called something different, um, but he's still the main dude. And so because I knew him from going out there so many times in the years previous, when I walked up to this club, we were able to skip the line and everybody kind of thought it was a big deal simply because I instantly shook this guy's hand, we had a short conversation, we enjoyed seeing each other's presence, right? Instantly I had social proof. I walk in there, it's very, it's gonna be very easy for me to get a attraction from any girl I want, right? They're gonna already assume a lot of positive things ar about me simply because I seem to be like a big deal because I had turned it on, because I had social proof going for me. Another story about a place I'd never been before. Now, I wanna ask you this. How many of you guys saw my post of me um, announcing this live stream today um, a few days ago? I think it was on Thursday, 
Wednesday or Thursday night. I, and I was wearing like a money shirt and I had like a Snapchat filter over me with like a, a head with a hat. How many of you guys saw that post? Let me see some comments. I know you, it's a little bit delayed. So I, I, I see the comments come in like 15 seconds after I ask you a question. All right, so one guy saw it, another guy saw it. Yeah, so several of you guys saw that. Now, how many of you guys follow me on Instagram? Let me ask you this. Seen that pick and fish tacos? Yup, Sean Phillips, he saw me on Instagram. How many of you guys, all right, Jared, you gotta go follow me on Instagram, right? Cause you're gonna see, you're gonna get the backstory to stuff that was happening on my Instagram story. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a lot of guys here follow me on Instagram. How many of you guys remember that I went to a karaoke bar uh, on Thursday? Didn't see, but my friends told me about it. All right, how many, how many guys saw me at the karaoke bar uh, on, on Thursday? So here's the, here's the story, man, about the karaoke bar. Um, I uploaded a lot of stories to my, chat, to my Instagram story. So if you don't follow me, I'm posting advice on there on my stories and my posts um, frequently, right? Um, and you, you actually get to see me go out and apply a lot of the stuff that we talk about, right? So Thursday night, went to a karaoke bar, never been to this place, don't know a single person there. It's in a small town in Arizona. The only reason we went is because my girlfriend, um, who actually ironically met her at Cake, the, the nightclub from Scottsdale I was just telling you about. Um, but this is her hometown bar, right? We go there. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Um, Sean just said, your live, stream, your live feeds are fire. Thank you, my man, right? And it's, it's because I'm, I'm literally just like vibing here. I'm giving you, telling stories, giving advice, giving value, right? So we go to this karaoke bar, me and my girlfriend. Um, I'm meeting her friends and all this stuff. I go up there. I have, I've essentially turned on my magnetic charm, my magnetic, magnetic aura. And just like in the Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe story, when you turn it on, it's something that's obvious to everybody around you, even if they haven't talked to you yet, right? It comes through in your eye contact, your body language, your vocal tonality, how you stand, how you move. It comes through in everything, right? And it, it, I'll tell you how to do this here in a second. It's very simple. Um, but I turned it on. I went up. I sang a karaoke song. Um, and it, it was, um, it, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, if you know the name of the song I was singing and you comment it right now, I will give you access to that $500 course for free. Um, only one though, the first one who says it, but, uh, I sang one song and after the song, literally I was standing at the bar with my girlfriend and she has like some gay dude friends. And like, so my girlfriend has an interesting group of friends. There's like a bunch of like flamboyant gay guys and then a bunch of like other guys who wouldn't you would not think would hang out with them right and I remember not only did the gay guy make a comment to my girlfriend like oh my god he's so hot uh I bet he has a huge penis like my girlfriend told me about this afterwards right that's a, an example of like someone feeling the magnetic aura and automatically assuming positive things about me. But also this other group of girls, one of them, she's, she was Asian. And I remember these like were middle-aged women and it looked like they had just come to this bar after getting off work from like some dental office or something. Cause they were still wearing like the scrubs and everything. The Asian girl comes up to me and she goes, excuse me. And in this moment, I'm standing next to my girlfriend. I'm like, oh shit, is this girlfriend going to hit on, is this girl going to hit on me in front of my girlfriend? And she comes up and she says, excuse me. And I'm already thinking this girl's totally going to hit on me. Remember, assuming all positive things. And then she goes, my friend really wants to take a picture with you. So not only did she not hit on me, but she, she was the one who had to come over and talk to me for her friend who was too embarrassed to come over and talk to me. And so naturally I was like, yes, I'll come over and take a picture with you. And it's almost like I walk into this place I've never been. And simply because I, I knew how to turn on my magnetic aura on command, um, people almost started treating me like a celebrity and they were assuming positive and attractive things about me, even though they probably never, never met me before that night. Right, literally this group of middle-aged women who just got off work wanted to take a picture of me because for whatever reason they were drawn to me, right? And this happened literally on Thursday, right? So how do you do it? Well, um, let me read this to you. I, I wanna make sure I don't miss this. So not only when you know how to turn this on and on command, the magnetic aura, this magnetic charm about you, um, not only will you make women drawn to you, but it also makes you a good leader, right? So this, this seeps into air, every area of your life, right? So if you know, if you lead a team of some sort, if you have employees, or you're looking to build your social circle, or you've ever thought that women were just drawn to money and good looks, it's not that they're drawn to money and good looks. 
is that they're drawn to the behaviors that the guys who've money, who have money and good looks, AKA like celebrities and high status people in society, they have these certain behaviors in their personality that they can turn on at a given moment, right? Because if you ask anybody who's like got any status or they have employees or they run a company, they are almost putting on, they're almost like putting on a different mask, a different front, a different personality um, in front of their employees, right? Because they turn it on, they go into character and you can do the same thing with this. And it just comes down to three things, three things, conviction, composure, and charisma, right? Conviction, composure, and charisma. I call those the three C's of a magnetic personality. If you know how to get those three things into your own personality and flip them on like a switch, very simple to do, it's literally like this, it creates this celebrity aura around you. Conviction, composure, and charisma. Conviction is literally just being a decisive person, right? Someone who moves with certainty. Not uncertainty, not wishy-washiness, but you know what you want, you go after it, and you, you decide on what action to take in the moment. Whether or, not, whether or not you know it's the right action, you just move forward as if you're the leader, right? Everybody's gonna follow your lead, right? The reason why lead, leaders are leaders are because they make the decisive action in the moment and other people just follow along because they don't know what, what the right action in, is in that moment, so they just follow your lead. Conviction, composure. How do you handle your own emotional state? How do you talk to yourself? What vibe are you giving off to the people around you, right? And this comes into your body language, your vocal tonality, um, and just like being able to take yourself out of negative states, take yourself out of negative thinking, and take, put yourself into positive states and positive thinking and understanding what emotional state do you need to access in that particular moment to have the desired result you want in that moment. Remember, um, I told you that uh, you know baby step seduction or women following your lead or making things a win-win by understanding human nature and the motivations of what causes people and women to take certain actions, right? This is very, that's what composure is, is basically knowing how to do that on a, like on steroids. And then charisma, the a simple definition, not a lot of people know this definition, and in fact, if you've ever seen anybody else, uh, let's say on YouTube or in the dating community talk about charisma, honestly, it's because they've likely seen my works on this stuff and taught it, because I've been talking about this, this actual formula for creating a magnetic aura around you for the last four and a half years, five years, right? So I've kind of been the guy who really like narrowed it down to these three traits. And the way I define charisma is simply the contagious vibe that brings people around you up, right? The contagious vibe that you give off that brings others around you up, right? Because we've all been around those types of people who when they enter a room, it's almost like, the energy gets, just gets sucked out of the room, right? It's like, oh fuck, they're here, oh shit, you know? Let me ask you, is, have you ever experienced being in a social situation where a person enters the room and the energy instantly gets sucked out? It's not necessarily because they're a bad person by any means, but it's just because of the vibe that they're giving off. It brought people around them down, right? Hopefully that's not you, but have you ever, can you, can you imagine a scenario like this? I wanna see you guys with the comments, right? Have you ever been through something like that? Exactly, women prefer men who make bad decisions over men who can't decide at all. Exactly, because he's decisive, right? Um, I wanna see your comments, man. Let's engage. Yes, yes, Khalil. We've all been around those types of people all the time. Hopefully it's not you. Owen Brooks, yes, yes. Right, so charisma. In that moment, that type of person had like negative charisma. They were the least charismatic person in the room at the moment because their presence brought everybody's energy level down. It brought people down. But if you have good charisma, your energy, your presence brings the people around you up. That's why when you turn it on and you know how to consciously turn it on, it literally like, you don't have to talk to someone around you, they can just feel your presence, right? And it's, it's a combination, <laughs> my ex, <laughs> it's a combination of, um, of not only like the other two traits that I told you about, but just the way you carry yourself, the way you look at people, the way they respond to you, it's like this, this trickle effect to where other people see other people respond to you, to you that way and then they feel um, that way around you when they look at you, literally. So that's how powerful mastering these three things are, right? And when you know how to turn these three traits on um, whenever you want and you can access them on command, you'll be able to have an entire room 
of women revolving around you instantly. Like I told you, karaoke, Thursday night. A lot of you guys saw this going down on my Instagram story or just like me knowing the door guy. How do you think I met the door guy? I met the door guy because I he'd, he recognized me at that club and then we saw each other at another club and he came up and talked to me because he recognized me and thought I must be someone important, right? That's how I met him, is because of this, right? Those three traits that I've consciously um, learned how to create and bring out on command and it's very easy for you to do. Also, you'll be able to make any girl, right? You'll be able to make her go out of her way to compete with you, compete for you and your attention, right? Why? Because the alternative is if she doesn't compete for your attention, then other girls are gonna get your attention. Obviously, she's gonna have more competition because you're gonna be a more in-demand resource in that moment, right? And then the, the, best, the best, I would say, the best trait, the best, I guess, symptom of having this is that you become a consistent closer with women. Like virtually any girl around you, if you know how to lead it forward, right, it'll virtually unlock the legs of any girl you want, right? Because before, where if you didn't have, uh, you didn't know how to turn this on in public, in social situations, right? You didn't know how to go into character, essentially. Then, and here's the thing, man, it's not like it's pretending to be someone you're not, it's just naturally amplifying the, mo the attractive parts of your personality that are already there. I wanna make that clear. This is not pretending to be someone you're not, this is amplifying the attractive parts of your personality and kind of decreasing in the moment the, 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 the anti-attractive parts of your personality, right? Everybody has the capacity to make quick decisions, be decisive in the moment. Everybody has the capacity to be, have, be in a good state, have good emotions flowing through them. Everybody has the capacity to um, talk to people with a certain eye contact, with a certain charm, to use the words, right, that make the people around you feel better about themselves, AKA you're bringing them up just by being in their presence, right? Everybody has the capacity to do this and this is not being someone that you're not and pretending to be someone you're not just to manipulate other people to like you. It's simply amplifying the attractive parts of your personality. And when you have all that social proof working for you and you've done secrets one through four and you, uh, you add secret number five on top of it, having this magnetic aura around you, no woman won't wanna sleep with you if you lead it forward, period, right? Because the, if she sleeps with you, there's only a win-win here. Talking about going back to secret number two, making everything a win-win. She wins when she ends up with you because she's the girl who ended up with the guy who was in demand, the guy who had the most status in the room, the guy who seemed to be the celebrity in that environment, right? And you don't have to be a celebrity. You don't have to be necessarily good looking or rich, right? Because the only people, the only reason why people who are good looking or rich like my friend from high school who was naturally the, the charismatic guy who ended up with all the girls. It's not because he was the best looking dude, right? I still don't think he's the best looking dude. It's not because he's the richest guy, right? I've got, I've, at the time when I was getting a lot of success with women in Scottsdale, I was broke, right? It, it doesn't take money. It takes the behaviors that having good looks or money give you, right? A guy can be short, he can be broke, and if he has these behaviors and he knows how to bring them out, then people assume positive things about you. They assume you got money. They assume you're someone who's in demand that they should get to know you, right? It's the behaviors that having those things going for you creates, but in reality, right, those guys are not secure in themselves because as soon as they lose the money, as soon as they are in an environment where other people are better looking than them, they don't know how to consciously turn this on and they don't feel the confidence in that moment. Right? But if you know how to consciously create this, you can go anywhere you want, turn it on, and people will already be drawn to you. And if you apply everything we've talked about in this live stream already, dude, you will consistently start closing with the women that you interact with. There's no question about it. Just like when Kobe goes into any basketball game, if it's a pickup game, if it's on the road after you know playing four games that week, if it's during the NBA Finals, he has the right mentalities, the fundamentals in place to succeed in the moment, no matter who his opponent is, right? Because they don't have the same mentalities. They don't have the same fundamentals going for them. Now, I promise you guys a surprise um, for the guys who, who stayed to the end of the live stream. But before we get to this, right? Before we get to this, I'm gonna choose, um, I'm gonna, not only am I gonna choose someone to give the $500 course to here in a second, but before we get to the surprise I have for you guys for sticking towards the end, right? Uh, I wanna ask you, how many of you guys got value out of this, right? I wanna see some feedback, I wanna see your comments, I wanna see if you guys actually enjoyed this, if you guys liked this information, if you guys got value from this information. 
Let me, let me get some feedback from you guys in the comments section. <laughs> LOL, love her, but damn. Damn, Patrick, you should give us hints before a live call so we can look out for posts to make the challenge for winning the $500 course is more fun. Just a suggestion. I, actually, I'll, I'll do that. It's a good suggestion. Me, bro, lots of value. Yeah, value like be like over 9,000. <laughs> this was good. You know it. Awesome, man. Um, what, what, what were some of the good things that you guys got out of this? Uh, who here, let me, let me ask you this, who here got at least one action step that you know you can go out and apply and get a better result moving forward? Who here got something that you know will help you out in the future? Always, plus one, always get value from these live streams, assuming the good, thanks for your response. I did, awesome, man, dude, awesome. See, this is, the, this is why I love live streams, because I can get, it's a conversation between us, all of us, right? You guys are connecting. I see you guys connecting in the comments and I'm able to get feedback from you guys um, in the moment so that way we can all grow together and that way I know that when I'm telling you something, showing you something, teaching you something really cool, um, it, it really helps you guys and it hits home for you guys. So I love this. Um, so here's the surprise for you guys. And this is kind of like last week, but one of my best-selling courses is the Magnetic Personality Formula. And like I said, I was really the first one to put out a course uh, of this nature about four and a half years ago. And since then, it's been Raw Dating Advice's number one selling course. Normally, this goes for 197. And in the past recent months, I've done launches on my list for the Magnetic Personality Formula um, for $97. And in the Magnetic Personality Formula, all I do is I completely deep dive the different habits that you can do every single day to install conviction, composure, and charisma into everything that you do. That way you can go out into a karaoke bar or a different nightclub, whatever, wherever you wanna go, and you can instantly turn on this magnetic aura at a moment's notice, just like Norma Jean Mortensen, right? You turn it on and it's not pretending to be someone that you're not, it's bringing out the most attractive parts of your personality that are already there. And here's the thing, man. Normally it goes for $97. That was the last launch that we did. In the past, most guys have paid in $197. But today, because you're on the live stream, and this only goes for the guys who are on the live stream, meaning that if you watch the replay tomorrow, this will not be available. I'm gonna give it to you guys for literally 25% of what normally most guys will pay for it. Meaning that for just $47, you can get full access to the complete magnetic personality formula program, right? And so what is this program? This program is literally just me at a seminar where I had nine guys travel um, from all, all over the nation. One guy came from Mexico, one guy came from Idaho. Um, and these guys traveled to Scottsdale and I literally taught them the magnetic personality formula, recorded the whole thing, you guys get all that. And then I put it into actionable steps. I broke it down to where it's easily digestible. And that's, you can get all that for 47 bucks a day. Like I said, massively discounted price. All you gotta do is click the link in the description of this live stream if you wanna access the, this. And if you came back tomorrow, that link would not be at $47. It'd go back up to the normal price of 97 bucks. So this is just for live stream guys today. Now I did say, all right, so you can buy it from no matter what country you're in. Um, you'll be able to access it instantly. As soon as um, your payment is approved, you'll get instant access to it. You create your membership account. You can go in and start watching the training videos, right? Plus you'll get the ebook, the Magnetic Personality Formula, if you guys prefer to read rather than watch, you'll get the entire ebook. Also, there's a couple of other bonuses, and I have a fast action bonus just for live stream members today. All right, first bonus you're gonna get is Social Circle On Command, right? So a lot of guys think that cold approaching women is the only way to meet women. In fact, it's not. Another uh, very effective way to um, uh, meet women and attract and get high quality women is by building a badass social circle. So I interviewed one of the guys um, who's a DJ in California, who I believe has really good uh, social circle skills. Knowing a lot of people, getting connected with a, a lot of high value people and a lot of high value women, and how does he create that environment, that, that type of aura for himself? Using the magnetic personality formula, those three traits, how does he do that and how can anybody do that in their own city, even if you live in a small town? That's the first bonus. Second bonus is the seduction triggers on your outfit, right? So one of my good friends, Ryan McGinn, he used to be the handsome guy expert where NFL players literally would hire him to dress them before um, their NFL draft, right? I interviewed him and you're gonna get that as a bonus where we gave you the exact seduction triggers that attract women 
and it's like it's like little tweaks you make to your outfit that don't cost a lot of money, but um, it can change everything for you. So for example, did you know that having layers, right? Right now I'm wearing two layers. If I was wearing just a t-shirt, that's seen as less attractive than a guy who's wearing two layers. What happens if I add a jacket over this hoodie? That's three layers. More layers makes you more attractive. That's one of like the 20 plus things that we talk about in that interview. So that's really cool. And then here's the fast action bonus for all the guys on this live stream right now. If you pick up the magnetic personality formula where I give you those two bonuses and I dive deep into how to bring out conviction, composure, and charisma in a very natural way just by installing these simple little habits into your daily routines, right? Um, if you pick it up today, I'm gonna do something really cool for you guys. And this is fast action, right? Um, only today, if you got this after midnight tonight, it would not be available. I'm gonna give you guys something called the infield audios, where literally, I went out and I put up a, a hidden mic under my shirt, and I went out in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I recorded every single conversation that I had. And not only that, but afterwards I went through the audio, broke up the conversations into several different categories, the times that I got rejected by girls, the times I had really good interactions and really good banter, and then um, uh, even, did I say the rejections? I got rejected, me approaching a lot of women, me getting girls' phone numbers, and then me at the end of the night approaching a girl and going home with her, and you're gonna hear everything on how I did everything from the start of the conversation to the end of the conversation. And not only that, but I went into the audios after the fact and broke down everything that happened. So I paused the audio and then I, after the fact I was like, so this just happened and here's why I said this and here's why she responded in this way. Let's can keep listening, right? I did that for the entire night, all in all those different types of conversations. So you're gonna hear me approach a lot of women, you're gonna hear me get girls' phone numbers, you're gonna get, hear me get rejected and why I got rejected and you're also gonna hear me pull a girl home at the end of the night after approaching her at a bar in Scottsdale, right? So if you want that, that is not something that anybody who's bought the magnetic personality formula has ever gotten as a bonus, and I'm only throwing that in to the guys on the live stream today. If you get the magnetic personality formula for 47 bucks, which is 25% of what it normally costs. Like I said, in the past, guys have paid 197. So, uh, do you guys have any questions about the magnetic personality formula? Also, I do have a $500 course to be given away here. So, King AI, Patrick stuff is the best, no joke. Um, Josh, yes, you can buy it from any other country. Um, as long as you have a credit card and internet access, it will work for you. Um, don't get paid till the first. Well, here's the thing, man. <laughs> can you tell us five good opening lines for Tinder? Um, actually, yes, I actually did. If you were on the live stream last week, we talked a lot about this. Also, let me do this. Um, hold on. So... What else can you get for $47? Let's, let's brainstorm here. Well, you can get for 47 bucks an Xbox controller. For 47 bucks, you can get two of Kobe's books. For 47 bucks, you can get two phone, phone, uh, phone cases. 47 bucks, you can get um, half a week's worth of groceries. Or you can get one dinner where you take a girl out on a date, or you can get four drinks at the bar with you and your buddies, or you can get the secrets to having a magnetic personality formula that women are automatically drawn to, that you can turn on at a given notice that people, it creates this celebrity aura around you. So I don't know about you, but I would much rather invest in becoming the most magnetic, charismatic, and confident and courageous version of myself for 47 bucks, rather than buying another Xbox controller. That's just me, but I don't, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but that's just me, right? So, like I said, um, if you guys have any questions, I'm here for you. If not, then, uh, you know, let's, let's uh, give away this $500 course. Um, real talk, no rabbit, let me buy like 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, man, so if you want this, all you gotta do is click the link in the description right now. So I'll read the description. It literally says, how to be a closer with women, the closer's mentality is seduction. Install the closer's mentality today. And then it says, where's the maker want you com slash 107 only. Click on that link. That'll take you to the page where you can get access to this for this one-time discount. Remember, this is only for live stream viewers only. So if you watch the replay, this would not be available. It would be back to its normal price. And like I said, 
for any of the guys who get this program while we're on the live stream, I'm going to give you access to the infield audios on top of all the other bonuses. So infield audios, you're going to hear me approach a lot of women. You're going to hear me um, get their phone number. You're going to hear me get rejected and I'll tell you why I got rejected. You're also going to hear me go home with a girl. How do I lead her out of the club and you know handle her friends back to my place, right? How do I do all of that stuff? What do I say in the moment? I'm going to give you all of that stuff with me completely breaking down everything along the way as an act, fast action bonus just for the guys on this live stream who grab the magnetic personality formula right now. Now, like I said, here's the thing, man. You could go out and easily apply a lot of the stuff that we've talked about today, um, and that would be fine. You would definitely get better results. In fact, I asked you, um, before I even told you about this surprise I had for you guys, um, how many of you guys got some actual value out of this? And a lot of you guys did. So you could do that, or, you could invest the small, small price of just $47 today and grab the magnetic personality formula for literally 25% of what any other guy has gotten, plus get a badass bonus that nobody else has ever seen. I don't know about you, but it sounds like a no brainer to me. And it's just my way of saying thank you for being here with me, engaging with me uh, in conversation, really just being present on this live stream. Um, now, like I said, what else could you buy for 47 bucks? Well, you could buy a couple of drinks at a bar with your buddies. You could go to take a girl to a steak dinner and not necessarily guarantee your results because you don't have the magnetic personality formula. You could um, buy a few groceries if you wanted. You could buy an Xbox controller or you can get the three secret keys to a magnetic personality that women cannot resist. And those three keys, like I said, are conviction, composure, and charisma. Now, let me let me address the guys who maybe $50, 47 bucks is a lot for you right now. If you feel like it's a lot for you, let me talk about this. Um, here's the thing, man. Money is funny, right? Money is funny. Uh, it's like you, you spend 50 bucks or $100, whatever it may be, but what happens to that money two weeks later? Two weeks later, you get a paycheck, you get paid again, that money com comes back, it replaces itself. But what happens to your time? Does your time ever come back? When you go out and you fail and fail over and over again and maybe you're not getting the results that you want and you're choosing to save money here but you're wasting time here, the money will come back two weeks later but that time, you'll never get that back again. You will never get that time back. For and, and if you can get that time back, dude, please tell me how because I would love to know. I would love to know. So what I'm trying to do for my guys on the live stream is I'm trying to not only give you actionable advice, give you a lot of value up front, but with like today, and trust me, this doesn't happen all the time. I don't do this every time, right? But when I offer you like a 25%, like 75% discount literally off of what everybody else paid, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to save you a lot of time by giving you the training, the answers up front outside of this live stream. This is for the guys who really um, wanna take their game to the next level and who are serious about their investment, um, investing in themselves and becoming the best version of themselves, right? Um, not everybody is an action taker, I understand that. Not everybody wants to improve themselves. I understand that too, right? Some people think um, dating advice is below them and they're too good to follow it. That's fine, man. You, if that's you, then you're not gonna vibe with this stuff anyways. But if you're the type of guy who likes this advice, you know my values, you know my teachings, and you've already gotten results from it, or you can see it working for you in the future because you already have a few action steps to apply to your life right now, then dude, this is a no fucking brainer, right? 50 bucks is not a lot of money. It's most, how many, how many, how many kids have Xboxes and Xbox controllers? How many fucking people go out and waste money on drinks on the weekends just so they can get drunk to have the courage to go up and talk to that girl? What if rather than buying three drinks at the bar, you saved that 50 bucks, learn the magnetic personality formula, and then she came over and talked to you. You don't need that liquid courage just to have the confidence, the balls to go up there and be charismatic around her. You, you learn what creates charisma, what cre how to keep your composure under pressure, how to lead women with conviction, and then naturally those things just start to happen for you, right? I don't know about you, but I would much rather invest my money towards that, right? So that's just uh, that's just my own rant for you guys. But uh, I'm gonna pick a $500 course to give away um, to one of you guys who asked me the question, and I think I'm going to give it to the guy who asked me um, the question about, uh, 
I'm gonna give it to the guy who asked me the question about uh, not wanting to be a womanizer. That was, what was his name? Roy, Roy, you won that $500 course, my dude. So all you gotta do to claim your course is comment on my last video, my last live stream that I did last week, leave a comment with your email address and we will email you with instructions on how to access this $500 course. Congratulations on winning today. Now, a uh, couple other questions. Thanks for God, thank, thank God for Patrick James, LOL. You're the only one that does live streams in dating industry, making you stand out and putting you at the top of the food chain. Thank you, my dude. Uh, it ain't the fact that I don't want to spend, I don't have it, however, I'm going to follow you. Thank you, Khalil. Um, like I said, so if you can't get it right now, this offer expires at midnight. So if you can somehow find $50 before midnight, um, then you'll be eligible for this. Just follow the link in the description. But after midnight tonight, and this is Pacific Standard Time, so California time, then um, that link will change. So the page that loads when you click that link will change and the price will go back up. All right, so if you wanna grab it for this special low price, only for the guys who are on the live stream right now, click the link below and you'll get instant access to all that. Plus, you're gonna get instant access to the infield audios with me going out, approaching women, talking to women, creating this aura, magnetic aura for myself in a Scottsdale bar. And you're gonna hear me break down everything, why I said what I said, why I got the result I did, why she responded in that way, and what I was thinking in the moment to get the result that I wanted, right? So you're gonna get that. Roy, <laughs> oh shit, thanks. Yes, sir. So all you gotta do, Roy, comment on my last video with your email address. We'll email you with instructions on how to get it. Now, um, good job, Roy, that's what's up. I know how to be more charismatic. I'd love to know how to be more charismatic. Charisma, like I said, is it's literally being able to use your words to make other people feel good about themselves. Literally, by being in your presence, they will feel better about themselves. It's a contagious vibe that, that brings others up. Now, in the magnetic personality formula, I give you, I believe it's nine different, um, no, correction, five. Five different um, traits, habits, that you can apply to your day-to-day -day routines that will naturally bring out your charisma. So that way when, and here's the thing, man, it's like, going into basketball practice and practicing bounce passes. There's a reason why Kobe Bryant and the Lakers would practice bounce passes with Phil Jackson, even though they're professional basketball players, because practicing the fundamentals leads to great results during the game time, right? So in this program, not only was I inspired by guys like Kobe, right? But I literally dissected guys like Kobe, guys like Russell Brand, guys like George Clooney, guys like Brad Pitt, the successful uh, Hollywood seducers in, in Hollywood, right? And, or even just like professional athletes. And what I did was I dissected what about them made them charismatic. How, why do people, people follow this, this guy? Why does he get the results that he did? And I literally boil it down to those three traits, conviction, composure, and charisma. And I figured out the different habits that if you do them every day, just like practicing bounce passes in practice, they will manifest themselves into you being a more uh, person who has more conviction and is easily able to maintain his composure under fire in a way that seduces women and a way that attracts women and you're gonna have that charisma that naturally not only attracts women to you, but everybody, right? Like I said, the door guy at this Scottsdale nightclub where I met my girlfriend and how, how I met him at a different club because he recognized me, right? That's all because of the magnetic personality formula. So it's just making everybody more drawn to you in general, right? When you get these three things down, it's not only reserved for women. It's making you a more magnetic person everywhere, all right? <laughs> Miguel, I fucking wanna be charismatic AF. Awesome, dude. All right, so you mentioned something about an add-on for shy guys. Anything more you can say about that? Yes, so uh, on the order form, um, so literally you click the link down below and then it'll have like a lot of information about what, you, what you'll get in the magnetic personality formula, some of the bonuses that I describe it, and then you click the link to go to the order form to enter your information, right? So when you go there, you'll have an option to upgrade your order by adding the audios to your order. So this is a video program where I re recorded an entire seminar and then I you know, basically broke down this entire magnetic personality formula for you guys. You get that by default. 
if you wanna upgrade your order and get the audios so that way you can download it to your phone and take the audios wherever you want, listen to them at the gym, listen to them in the car, it's just a small upgrade, not gonna break the bank for you, and as, a, uh, as an ethical bribe to upgrade your order, I'm gonna give you something, it's called the Shy Guy Formula, where I teach you, if you're a naturally shy guy, you consider yourself to be introverted, how do you use the magnetic personality formula and apply it to you even though you're a little bit more shy than the average person? Maybe you see yourself as a little bit more reserved. How do we get you to a level playing field to where the magnetic personality formula not only works for you, but it works even better for you? Because here's the thing, man, you don't have to be the most outgoing guy in the room to be charismatic, to be magnetic. You don't. It doesn't ha you don't have to be um, you know, out like a dancing monkey, right? You can be the shy guy in the room and still get girls, still get attraction from people, still get have this magnetic personality work for you, right? And I'll, I'll quote Kobe Bryant's trainer, Tim Grover. If you ever read his book, Relentless, highly recommend that book. He says it himself. He said, the loudest guy in the room often has the most to prove. Right, Just like the Godfather. The Godfather was never the, the loudest guy in the room. He was never the most outgoing guy in the room. He was the quietest guy in the room. Right, So you don't have to be the most outgoing guy in the room to be magnetic to women or just people in general. Right, So you can be introverted. You can be quiet. You can be a little bit more reserved. And the Shy Guy formula shows you how to do that by you applying the magnetic personality formula if that's your personality. Because like I said, the goal of this program is not to make you someone that you're not. It's not to make you a, a Patrick James clone by any means. It is to make you the most attractive, confident, courageous, and charismatic version of yourself. Bringing out, amplifying the most attractive parts of your personality, not necessarily someone else's personality. All right? So that's what you'll get with this. I'm already seeing some orders coming in. Love this. Theodore, Cameron, love this, awesome guys. You guys are really gonna enjoy this. Also, I know a few guys last time, um, they picked up the 30 Perfect Text. If you're on this live stream right now and you had questions about how to access this, um, don't call the customer support number. The only reason we have a customer support number is because legally we have to, but our customer support team is really fast at answering your email. So if you're having trouble accessing your programs, email us and we'll give you instant access to everything that you've purchased. All right, just wanted to throw that in there. Um, so, hey Patrick, if your conversation, if it's your conversation mastery program, I already have it, you can give it to someone else. Roy, you, that is my fucking man, Roy. <laughs> so Roy won the program. He's already invested in the program. Um, he already has it. So I'm gonna choose someone else. So someone else submitted me a different question. We'll choose another question to give a $500 course to. Um, if you've already won the course, obviously, uh, don't, don't participate in this. But, um, yeah man, looking forward to you guys' questions. Charisma, I can do that. Yes, uh, thank you. What was the other two? So it's conviction, composure, charisma, right? A lot of guys get these wrong, uh, and a lot of guys really, they'll hear that and really like take it off the deep end. They won't do it the right way. In Magnetic personality formula. I show you not only the habits that install those habits those traits into your personality and how you are And honestly, you can turn it on and off whenever you want. It's literally like a switch, right? Um, but uh, I show you how to do it the right way, right? There's a lot of people who I've mentioned this term earlier in this live stream I call them frame freaks or maybe they learn dating advice and they kind of just take things into their own hands and they seem try hard. They seem like they're pushing for a certain outcome. They do, they they're they're doing things for the reaction of attraction, right? And if you're if you're doing things in that way, and if you're not doing it the the proper way um, by eliminating a lot of the unattractive behaviors and doing this, because here's the thing, man. With the magnetic personality formula, you can't be. You don't want to be the guy who does these things and you're like the fucking the guy who shows up like the old school pickup artist shows up to the bars, you're wearing like fishnet shirt and the black eyeliner and everybody instantly knows, oh, this guy's trying really hard, right? The magnetic personality formula is something that naturally just like inserts itself into your personality to where in those crucial moments where she's looking to who to, for who to be attracted to, you naturally stand out as the most obvious choice because you're the only guy who has these traits going for you, right? She can see it instantly by looking at you, just by being in your presence. That's the essence of charisma. So that's what this is gonna help you do. And honestly, man, if you've liked a lot of the stuff we've talked about today, this program is a no brainer for you. Especially if, you know, if you're already going out and trying to meet women and you are all like, think about it. Like I said, 
You can spend money on a fucking new shirt, right? And you think, oh, I'm gonna get so many girls with this awesome shirt or this new pair of shoes, or I'm gonna go home and play Xbox, get a new Xbox controller, or I'm gonna go drink a few drinks at the bar just to get some liquid courage so I can go up and talk to that one girl. Or you can install the magnetic personality formula and let all those girls come to you, right? And you know how to lead it forward. I don't know about you, but that's a no brainer to me, right? I don't want, I don't want to have to rely on liquid courage or some marijuana just to give me, put me in an emotional state, give me the composure to be able, be able, be able to go up and attract that girl. I want to be able to do this at a moment's notice, no matter where I am, no matter what state of mind I'm in, if you know what I'm saying. That's, that's just me though. You know, that's just me. Roy, you are a badass, selfless mofo. Conviction, LOL, thanks King. Um, so Janice, I hope that clarified things for you when I described the magnetic personality formula. Um, also, all right, so I'm going back scrolling through some other questions so I can give away this $500 course. Um, but if you guys have any other questions, definitely submit them. You could potentially win a $500 course. So, uh, all right, I live in Alaska. And, and women have a lot of leverage due to the fact that there's more dudes than chicks and there aren't many hot ones. What do you suggest to help balance that leverage out? Actually, Matt, I kind of already alluded to this because um, I talked about your question. Honestly, man, if I don't get any, any other questions in the next 10 seconds, uh, I'm gonna choose you as the winner because we talked about this. And like I said, best question that we discuss on the live stream will win that course. All right, man. All right, all right, all right. So if you guys don't have any other questions, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close out today. Remember, this offer expires at midnight tonight, meaning that if you came back tomorrow or you're watching the replay, it would not be available. The link's gonna change before tomorrow, right? When midnight strikes, the link changes, the price goes back up. But if you want this price at literally 47 bucks, which is the cheapest the magnetic personality formula, my most popular program has ever been offered, right? Um, in the past, it was 197. Recently, we launched it again for $97. A lot of guys took it. Now I'm giving it only to live stream viewers on the live call, 47 bucks, 25% of what other guys have paid in the past, right? If you want that, plus you want the infield audios, which you'll be the only person to ever get access to, get this today, take action on this today. Even if it's a little bit uncomfortable for you to um, invest $50 in yourself, maybe that's a lot for you to invest in, in a program. Maybe you haven't invested in a program or maybe you've been burned in the past by investing into a program thinking it was gonna get you a result um, and then not necessarily getting the result that you wanted. If you've been burned in the past, I promise you, um, this will make the difference for you. Um, not only because it's my best-selling course and it has been for the last four years, but also uh, it was recently discussed uh, in the dating world and it was named the number one charisma course in the world that's out there. That's really cool. You guys are gonna get access to this for literally like 75% off of what other guys have paid for it. And that fast action bonus, nobody else has ever gotten. You're gonna get that today if you invest before midnight, just as a thank you for being on the live call. And let's see if I'm leaving anything else out here. Also, there is a money back guarantee, 30 days. Um, go through the course. If, if you're skeptical about this, if you're not sure if it's right for you, invest, 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 because this deal is not gonna be here forever. Um, especially if you think that it might be for you, if you think you might get value out of this, or if you've already gotten value out of this live stream that I know that you're gonna get value out of the course, right? Invest, try it out for 30 days. Worst comes to worst, it doesn't work out for you, it's not a good fit for you. Um, maybe you, you get hit by a car next week and you're, you're paralyzed and you can't go out and talk to women. Hope to God that doesn't happen, but you have 30 days to try this out, man. So in my head, I wanna make this as much of a no-brainer for you because it truly is a no-brainer, especially at this price. Um, I hate discounting my, my products this much, but I do it as a reward for you guys. So invest today, you have 30 days to try it out. Um, fast action bonus, infield audios only for you guys. Nobody else has got that in the past. Um, yeah, man. So I see some of you guys investing. Ryan, Cameron, awesome. Uh, I see some more questions coming in. There's a girl flirting with you. Doesn't doesn't mean she likes you. Here, I like. So this is a good question. Um, I'm not gonna choose it as a winner, but if a girl's flirting with you. I would say it does not necessarily mean she wants to sleep with you. Now there's a difference. A girl can be attracted to you, but not necessarily want to sleep with you. 
Why is that? Because attraction is like an emotion. It's a fleeting emotion. It doesn't last, right? Attraction is something that you spark in conversation and then you, if you spark it enough and you do a lot of things we talk about um, in 107 Proven Ways to Get the Girl to create obsession, which basically just takes her, her initial attraction for you and amplifies it to where she's obsessing about you when you're not around her, right? That's how you make girls want you long term and make you want to sleep with her or make her want to sleep with you, especially if you know how to lead it forward, right? Knowing how to lead a seduction uh, process forward, right? That's what's going to lead to you sleeping with her. But attraction itself is not the end, end game, right? It's not going to get you the girl at the end of the day, but it is absolutely necessary for you to get her, if that makes sense. Um, any advice or suggestions for this Wednesday since it's one of the biggest party nights of the year? Go out, have a good time, apply the magnetic personality formula. Um, dude, it, here's the thing. if I don't care where you're going out. If you're traveling, you're going home to see your family for Thanksgiving, um, I understand that, right? Uh, meaning that you're gonna be in a new environment. You're gonna potentially meet a lot of new people. If you have the magnetic personality formula working for you, meaning that you know how to turn on your charisma, you know how to lead with conviction, you know how to keep your composure when a girl's testing you, when you're in the moment and you, you see the hot girl and your friends don't have the balls to go over and talk to her, you know how to control your emotional state so you can go over and talk to her, not only go over and talk to her, but be in a good emotional state so that way those good emotions rub off on her. Dude, there's nothing more magnetic than these three keys to a magnetic aura, the celebrity aura. So my advice to you is if you have $50 to invest in this course or if you have already invested in this course, dude, no brainer, apply the magnetic personality formula, once you know what it is, once you know these habits, it's, it's a switch. It's not like something that happens over time. Obviously, the more you practice it, the better you'll get, but it's, it's literally a switch. It's not a marathon here, right? So question, if I won the live stream a couple weeks ago, is the, 50, is the $50 deal the same stuff or additional content? Uh, Mito Shiro, this is, uh, this is the magnetic personality formula. So if you won a product from a live stream in the past, it likely wasn't this program, right? So if it wasn't this program, this is a separate program. We got a whole line of programs for raw dating advice. This is my best selling. Also, I'm a little bit biased. It's my most favorite because it's the one that seeps into more areas of your life than all the other ones, right? Being a magnetic person helps you get a raise at your job. Therefore, you can make more money. It helps more people want to be around you. So guys, it'll get you the social proof at the club if you want to get to know the door guy, the bartender, right? Or if you go into an environment like I was on Thursday, if you guys follow me on Instagram, literally the people who see you, they're going to be magnetically drawn to you. They won't even know why, but you'll know why. It's this formula right here, right? So um, this, yeah, I, I, I forget why I was going with this, but literally... Um, this one seeps into every, every area of your life even more than, you know, for example, my texting course, right? 30 perfect text. That's very cut and dry. It goes to texting women. Magnetic, not only does it attract women, but it makes people just like being around you. It makes people more attracted to you in general. And it makes, a lot, it makes it a lot easier because it's a higher leverage point for you to end up with the girls that you want. If you apply the five secrets that closers have in their own mentality that we talked about today, the five secrets, I'll go over them again, right? And secret number five is the magnetic personality formula. Secret number one, avoiding the attraction, killing mistakes, the pussy repelling behaviors. The secret number two, the fundamental key to a closer's mentality with women, making every interaction a win-win. Secret number three, baby step seduction. Secret, secret number four, always assume the upside. And secret number five, the magnetic personality formula, knowing how to turn on that aura, that magnetic aura on command. All good closers know how to do that. And you should be able uh, to do that too, right? If you want to be a good closer, if you're serious about improving your results with women, um, the, this is the this is the answer. How do I seduce my ex and other girls I boinked just to just to be just cool and no strings? Uh, Khalil, uh, so here's here's a line that I got from my good friend Adam Galad. So Adam Galad is like. Uh, he, he's he's one of the OGs of dating advice, right? And he works with a lot of older guys because he's uh, he's in his fifties himself. Um, but he really he's the type of guy who uh, he was in a long marriage, had a couple of kids, and then got out of the marriage and got back into the dating scene. Didn't really know how to 
attractively date women. And then he learned it, got really good at it, like myself, became a dating coach. So he has this line for anytime you're dating a girl, seeing a girl, but you don't wanna make her exclusively one-on-one, -on -one, your, your girlfriend, right? Um, but you wanna continue seeing where this goes, right? All you gotta do is tell her that you have a rule for yourself that you don't uh, exclusively date one girl until you've been dating her for at least six months. And the reason you do this is because in the past, you've been burned um, by committing to a girl who wasn't necessarily the right one for you too soon, and you want to you know, be more cautious moving forward. So, you know, and you tell her, you like, you're like, I love what we're doing here, I, I love sleeping with you, having sex with you, uh, hanging out with you, going on dates, um, but just know like that's just a personal rule of mine is I don't wanna be exclusive until I've been seeing a girl for at least six months, right? And when you say it like that, she, it makes it easier for, easy for her to understand where you're coming from. Um, but two, it, now she feels okay about you seeing other women on top of her. Because in reality, you seeing other women, in her head, the way you, if you explain it the way I just said, it makes it, makes it a benefit to her, you seeing other women. Because it means that you are exploring your options, meaning that you can eliminate all these other women after you start seeing them on top of this girl and when you finally do choose her at the end of the day, it's because you chose her from a place of abundance and because you know that she's the right one for you in that moment, right? And that's what she tells herself and it's because you told her exactly what I told you to do. Um, so that's how I'd approach it. That's like an Adam Galad thing and I've tried it in the past. It works out really well, especially if you don't necessarily wanna date one girl but you wanna date several girls right now. Um, that's the way you can do it um, and make everybody feel like it's a <laughs> All right, uh, I just got a phone call. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so that's why the live stream got interrupted. But anyways, I'm gonna get out of here, man. We've been going for a very long time. Hope you guys enjoyed this. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to give this $500 course to, who asked me that last question? Um, all right, Khalil Staples, you've been interacting with us for a while. So I'm gonna give you access to this $500 course. Um, you are the winner this week. Boom, I'm gonna screenshot you. All you gotta do is comment your email address on my last live stream video, on my last video from last week. Comment your email address and we'll hit you up with in, via email uh, instructions on how to access this course. Congratulations again, man. Give it up for him. Um, but other than that, hope you guys got a lot of value out of this. Like I said, the magnetic personality formula goes back up in price and this fast action bonus disappears after midnight tonight. So if you have $50 laying around or if you're tired of wasting money for liquid courage to go up and talk to girls when you go out or you see the value of getting a magnetic personality formula or investing in an Xbox controller, right? This is a fucking no-brainer. It's just $47, right? So that said, that expires at midnight. Uh, I really enjoyed this with you. We will be doing another live stream next week. Um, I'm not sure the topic yet, so leave some comments below too on what topics you would like to see and we will announce what that topic will be on this Wednesday. So make sure you're subscribed, have the, those notifications turn on because I'm starting to use the, um, the community tab a lot more so that way I can make text posts to you without having to post a video so that way you guys know what future videos are coming out um, and that's kind of how I've been announcing these live streams. So have the notifications turn on, be subscribed and uh, I will be hopefully seeing you inside of the magnetic personality formula. I look forward to growing with you guys. Talk to you soon.